Well, I cannot actually think how lucky I am from waking up this morning. Actually got woken up by the beautiful and tranquil sounds of the Fall River with a nice hot beverage. And here I am this afternoon in the gorgeous, gorgeous Pridelands Eco Training. This afternoon I want to give you a warm, steaming hot welcome here on Pridelands with myself, Berenice, for sure as your naturalist. And behind the camera we do have Panda Bear. I am so excited, I'm so amped and so, so extremely fortunate and happy to be back once again. We are currently at Leopard Dam. I heard that there were some special canines around, so I would love to follow up and see what we can find. Nonetheless, uh, remember that this is a live and interactive safari, and we'd love for you to tune in. And whilst doing that, please do not mind to send us your uh, questions and to interact with me on this beautiful, beautiful wilderness experience through the Lowfeld Bushveld and all the other teams. So please do not mind to send in your questions or your comments or even suggestions. And I'd also love to hear from you what you would like to see on our journey together. Well, as you all know, this is Bingo Sunday. I think myself and Panda here and Team Pridelands are extremely excited. And I think we are here to kick some, some buttocks. All right, so I'm wishing all the other teams this afternoon all the best, all the luck. And I'm sure we all will do quite well. It's nice and warm. Um, but I, I believe we have it. We have it in us. Just want to listen out two seconds to hear if we can hear anything happening. Mandy, good afternoon. Mandy is saying Safari Bingo is her absolute favorite. Thanks, Mandy, for tuning in. Um, we're going to cross our toes and our fingers to see what we can find this afternoon or whatever uh, reveals themselves towards us. So I do for sure have my bingo face on. Panda has got his bingo face on. I really do hope the other teams have their um, bingo faces on as well. Alrighty, so hopefully we're not going to be the only team here on bingo. <laughs> But uh, yes, the crew is working um, uh, on the Juma feed and hopefully they'll be able to join us as soon as they can. And hopefully it's soon. There's no competition without them and I'm always keen for a great competition. I'm quite a competitive person. I'm actually going to hop on to the vehicle. Let's just move around. I don't think they are too close. Um, which is good because obviously I've me with my very excited voice um, will probably chase them off. Good afternoon Jenna, thank you so much. I'm also super excited to be back. It's been a really long day for traveling. I don't even know how I have so much energy and I think it's actually the bush that does all the work. So I'm gonna just turn around nicely here and just drive around slowly to see what we can what we can find. Ha, I've seen and I've heard that Pridelands has been so busy this last couple of weeks as a matter of fact. And that is very exciting, so much life, so many things happening. This is awesome. I'm so, so happy and so excited to be back. All 
Alrighty, so I hope everyone knows how this bingo rules work, eh? I still gotta pick my car to see what we're gonna look for and try to find. We had a nice willy next stalk in the water there just now. We'll just go around the dam to see if we can maybe have a nice visual of this beautiful beast of a bird. It's a nice water bird. Momo. Momo is asking what's my bingo strategy for this afternoon and um, <clears throat> yes my strategy is to uh, take some time spend some nice and quality bush time try to see what we can pick up on and obviously to win so and to kick some buttocks that's my absolute strategy as I've already said I'm quite a competitive person <laughs> Um, but I'm also, I, I love working in a team and, um, but I think we're going to take this one this afternoon. That is, that's my strategy. So, yeah. And always, it's always just good to spend nice quality time, not to rush and to open your ears and your eyes for all sounds or any visual, um, any track and sign. Alrighty, so we're going to take a nice and slow drive around Leopard Dam, but uh, let's head over to the weatherman to see what he or she has to say. Well, good afternoon and welcome everyone to Sunday's Sunset Safari and I'm Alex coming to you here from Okakuyo currently and as you can see we have an elephant approaching. Really fantastic. We've been holding out for Ellie's the entire day and with all likelihood this Ellie looks like he's steaming down on us so we should be in for an awesome sighting just now. We did just get the audio of a morning dove and we have some springbok here currently as well. Quite overcast. It looks like there's more than one Ellie. So let's just have a pan across and of course when they do get down to us. Just looks like the two individuals at the moment. So when they do get down to us we'll of course get a bit closer and enjoy them. And up here in Natasha they are known as the white ghosts. And that also just because of the substrate this concrete rock and stone that is around us and they do spray themselves with dust once they're wet and that does dry they do turn that very classic white and Natasha is then known for these white eddies because of that and of course they are then called the ghosts of Natasha they're also known to be some of the tallest eddies in the world so really fantastic and which eddies they are I'm not too sure but as I get closer we'll have a closer look It'll also be interesting to see what they do with these springbuck that are around. Perhaps the springbucks will just move off and then I'm sure find a place to drink in peace. So it does look like two bulls approaching us. One in the front, a little bit taller. Hi Jane, yes, thank you very much for joining us. And again, yeah, awesome that we have our Ellie's coming to play with us. Lovely way to kickstart Sunset Safari with Ellie's up here in Natasha. So, who knows what that does entail for everyone else. But um, of course, Ellie's are fantastic and always great to spend time with them. So you'll also just hear that very raucous call of the Cape Crows. 
looks like the eddies are going to just follow this path down and they'll probably end up right in front of us at the pump so where the water gets pumped out of into this pan so i'm actually just going to scroll across there now because they will be literally slap bang in front of us And you'll also just see a number of zebra off in the distance. The updated Wild Earth app is here, as well as 12 hours of fresh live content a day for free. You can watch repeats and highlights of shows you have missed. And if you have subscribed to Be An Explorer, exclusive access to the Behind The Scenes channel. Access to rehearsals for new locations, a chance to give us feedback. And explorers also watch totally ad-free. Download the app today. So a lovely scene playing out here at the moment. Two early bulls with us. And really fun times to be had. So let's just see if they even interact with each other. The one that's here on the left does seem to be a little bit bigger in body size. So let's just see how this all pans out. I do think we're probably going to see both of them a little deeper in the water at some point. does look like this one on the left is in the beginning stages of must. You see we can't smell them through the screen but uh, it does seem that way. A light little temporal stream going on and quite wet between his legs. But we'll have to just see how that pans out. Of course as I said it does look like it's probably the beginning stages of must. Not heavy or on set at the moment. Of course, he is facing with his back towards us, so we'll just have to wait and see what goes on. But really cool and lovely to kick start off with some of our giants. And it's time for us to go and see what Bernice has found across in Pridens. Well done, Alex. It's always lovely to start your day with gentle giants. Absolutely. 
Oh, wow. I guess we found our uh, canines that are resting up here on the western side, on the southwestern side of um, Leopard Dam, which this is so special. My goodness. It's always a treat to find and to be able to spend some time or just to be lucky to to see these guys out in the wild. Extremely, extremely vulnerable animals as they are very small. But nonetheless, quickly just to tell you that this is our first animal to tick off our bingo card this afternoon. So I want to make sure that everyone has seen or is now enjoying these wild dogs, these African wild dogs with us. They are also known as the Cape Hunting Dogs or the Painted Wolves, which actually Lyca on Pictus means. Their, their Latin names are Lyca on Pictus. Fantastic. This is lovely. They are just lying up in the shade, exactly what I would have done now, just to lie in the shade. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I shouldn't do that too loud, but everyone has confirmed our lovely viewers. Thank you so much. They have confirmed that they actually see these, these animals, these canines, and they are also confirming that they are indeed African wild dogs. This is fantastic. I haven't seen these guys in quite some time. So my heart is literally uh, just beating out of my lovely <laughs> bingo wild earth shirt. <sighs> just got to take a deep breath just to enjoy the absolute beauty of these guys. It's really marvelous. I think it might be the alpha male. Seems like the it must be the alpha male. I'll just double check again who is carrying that collar, that tracking device, so that we can track and monitor these very special and vulnerable species. But I would absolutely love to quickly show you just a quick one and to confirm with you how we're gonna do our strategy this afternoon. Fantastic. So we just kicked off and started off the Wild Earth afternoon safari here on Pridelands. Um, we were with Alex as well. He's got some elephants. We have wild dog. This is where we have put our dot with our wild dogs. Now we need a woolly neck stalk. I don't think that's going to be too difficult as we do have a woolly neck stalk at uh, Leopard Dam at the moment. We'll get to that. Elephants, oh, you know, Elephants are myself and pandas' favorite animals. I am sure we're going to find them. If we think like they're thinking, they're going to be going from waterhole to waterhole, also standing in the shade, mud bathing and, you know, cooling their bodies, maybe feeding. And then Egyptian goose. I think we all know Egyptian goose by now. They are absolutely everywhere. Very noisy goose or geese, but uh, we're going to find and enjoy them. So that is what we're thinking. Matabella ants as well. That's not too too hard to find. Um, the black hissing ants, also known as the Matabella ants. So that's our strategy. We're going to definitely win this um, bingo Sunday. I'm sure we are. I've got all the positivity and good vibes around this bingo Sunday. Riley, thank you so much. Well done, Team Pridelands. Yeah, this is fantastic. I really appreciate it, Riley. So kind of you. I love to hear kind things and to do kind things. Um, and this is fantastic. I am so happy to be able to, to spend some time here and to share this special moment with all of you watching at this very moment on this absolute beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon.
Hello, Chris. Chris is saying this is the perfect start to the Sunday. I cannot agree more. This is this is absolutely it. This is what we live for, actually. <laughs> so this is pretty perfect to me as well. They are currently just literally resting, like I said earlier, and they are digesting their food. As I heard, their bellies were quite full this morning. So, and this is a really good spot for them to, to sort of lie down and rest, to digest all their meat they had this morning. Apparently there's about four or five wild dogs here. I will see as they get up and move from shade to shade. But um, yeah, I think three adults and two youngsters or four adults and one youngster. We'll just have a nice look see. I just love those ears. Those ears are constantly working when they do make a, a, a successful hunt and kill. They have to feed really, really quick because they are small predators. They're not really right up there in the top. So if they are confronted with lions or maybe leopard and um, some hyena, I think they, they could be quite vulnerable. So they quickly feast and then they move off as quick as possible and go lie down for the rest of the day. <coughs> Look at those canines in the bottom jewel. Good afternoon, Millipede. Millipede, I love your name, first of all, is asking how big is this pack? Absolutely correct. It's a pack of African wild dogs. And I am not sure if this is the very first pack we started seeing myself and Panda when they started coming into Pridelands with their puppies. Because they were initially eight in the beginning. And then there were a pack of 15 and then there were also a huge pack of 30. And this could be quite interesting. I haven't been on Pridelands for quite some time. Um, but uh, I'm definitely going to spend a lot of time here. So you, you're probably going to get so tired of me, hopefully not of the animals. And we're going to take on this journey together to see how many there are. But I think this is the pack of four. So only four of those eight remained. There were three adults and then there were five puppies. So I think only one of the puppies, they made it. They survived or he or she survived with the three adults. The lions were very active during that time as well. And these um, wild dogs kept on finding themselves between these two prides of lions. So it is unfortunate. It's exactly what I just you know what I was just speaking of um, of inter -com uh, inter specific competition so it's competition of uh, animals of not the same species so it's always got to do about food and territory and maybe water and females females um, most of all but um, obviously this would be area related and food related competition between lions and uh, wild dogs, so inter specific competition. An exact opposite of that would be intra specific competition, and that would be competition um, about food, say for instance, of animals of the same species. So, say for instance, two lion prides fighting over a area or a female or a few females, and also food, definitely. Fantastic. I also heard a little bee, or shall I say a little bird, <laughs> talking to me earlier and saying that it is International or Happy Cheetah Day, World Cheetah Day. Absolutely. What other remarkable animals they are and part of the Magnificent Seven alongside with these beautiful Cape hunting dogs or African wild dogs or... Uh, painted wolves. They are indeed beautiful, beautiful creatures. Be Marvelous hunters, canines. They are absolute 
incredible predators, these guys. The way they hunt and the way they just also use each other, cannot live without one another, to, to hunt, to hunt and to kill and to feed, to look after one another. They are probably one of the most social animals out here. With only one alpha female and only one alpha male. So for sure these guys are always super special to spend time with. I think if I am correct there is about 29 or 28. Let's keep optimistic. 29 successful African wild dog packs within the whole of Kruger. And that's quite a good number. Um, and it seems like they are starting to do quite well, which is always good. And uh, even though they are endangered and they are very vulnerable, these guys, um, as I've mentioned earlier. So uh, at least a bit of positivity over there with uh, the amount that is left up until today. So it is marvelous. It is just, just marvelous to be able to spend time with these beautiful, beautiful animals. Oh yes, we're back here in Okakuyo and quite clearly our early bulls have been spraying themselves and interestingly enough we have another of the hindgut fermenters or another species that really has quite a rudimentary digestive system and that are, is the zebra. I'm going to get a little bit closer just because it will be nice to get everyone in frame. And just something interesting, at least with the Ellie's up here, is that the majority of them, at least I've noted, have rather toughless or hairless tails. So at the base of those tails, really lacking a lot of hair. And in a lot of other areas, you'll actually note how hairy those tails actually can get. So just something that is quite interesting, but good numbers of zebra as well. Of course, keeping their distance and staying on the other side of the water, allowing the Ellie's some space as well. The Ellie's can be quite temperamental around water, definitely throw the odd tantrum. In particular, it's generally the adolescents that do give other animals and even birds quite a hard time. Really quite cool. Lovely scenes here. Lovely and green in the distance there in that Mapani thicket that does line the other side. It's so correct Jonathan, they really do. And super relaxed at the moment, but lovely to see this one here spraying itself at the moment, trying to cool down I'm sure. And it always is cool watching Ellie's spray themselves with water or mud as well. So lovely to see, and really majestic as you said. And Springbok also sneaking through. But lovely scenes for an afternoon. Hi, Ryan. And yeah, I mean, listen, it would probably be quite unfair for me to team up with someone because I'm sure we would definitely win but um, we may not get overconfident there. We are fortunate at the moment that we do have quite a bit of action here in Okakuyo but we can be quite restricted at times because we obviously can't move so we just have to wait and see how it goes but uh, definitely a good start to our bingo here if we did have a board hopefully we'd be able to mark these two off. but definite confirmed sightings.
It looks like this other bull on the left of us is also going to have to start spraying himself as well. And they really do look quite interesting when they do splash themselves out, just because of how that substrate has kind of caked themselves white. So they kind of almost look like Jackson Pollock Elliot, but uh, you know that will dry rather quickly. It will get and will be rather hot anyway up here in Okokuyo. Hi, dark man lover, and to be completely honest, I am yet to see a live hunt here in Okakuyo, although I am told that uh, if you do focus on the peripheries of the water, there are a number of terrapins that do stay and live around here, and they are known to sometimes take the sand grass and perhaps even the doves as well and prey on them. So. Um, Perhaps we could see a live hunt like that. Otherwise, also birds of prey that do come through. We have had a number of jackal around of late, but um, because it's quite open, they do get alarm called that quite readily. And we've also had the helmeted guinea fowls also alarm calling at lions. And when there are good numbers of helmeted guinea fowls, it does sound like a bag of cats going off because they really do give it a good go. And everyone knows that there's a predator in the vicinity. But it's not impossible that there could be a live hunt. So, uh, you know, keeping our eyes peeled and seeing what happens, I do think it would probably be more of a night or a nocturnal activity though that might go on, perhaps even early morning. Maybe even an ambush through one of these little thickets that are littered around the water hole. So I suppose lack of the draw really dark man lover. You're so right Joy, it really is. It's lovely having different species around together. It's always cool having more than one sighting at a go at a time. So nice to have them. It does look like the zebra are probably going to start pushing off. Our ellies though look like they are going to be spraying themselves for a little bit longer and we still have those springbok around. So just try and make sure we get everyone in frame here. Trying to make sure that we can see both our ellies because it looks like our zebra are slowly moving off, but that's not a problem. Ellies are treating us. So Mel and MC also thinks and agrees with us watching Ellie's and she could watch them all day apparently and I'm sure most of the viewers would also. I also thoroughly enjoy spending time with the elephant. They are always up to something and interesting with what they do get up to. So let's just see what goes on now. Perhaps they might even take an opportunity just to rest up a little bit before venturing off into those Mapani thickets and perhaps then feeding for the majority of the day. It does look like they're a bit and rather relaxed now at the moment, so perhaps we might see them having a sleep. And this one definitely resting his trunk, as you can see. And here's the one that we assume is in the early stages of must. One or two zebras still making their way down. It looks like there might be some more coming through as well. Good afternoon, Thomas Harrington. And 
zebras, at least on average in the wild, will reach around 20 years of age. Obviously, that's on average. And in captivity, they can go up to around 40. So, I mean, it doesn't mean to say that all zebra live to around 20. They can obviously live far longer than that, but that's just an average figure. So, 20 plus odd in the wilderness and around 40 or so in captivity. So I'd say probably max is around 30, maybe 25 in the wilderness. It does depend on the area and it does depend on the access to resources as well. So quite cool. Looks like this one is perhaps getting ready to move off. And these two seem to be journeying together. And it looks like they are going to be journeying on away from us. But who knows, maybe a little dust bath now. It does look like we have some other zebras slowly starting to make their way down as well so we'll keep eyes on everything that is going on quite a bit of action this afternoon it seems like these ellies are taking opportunity just for a little bit of a rest not too sure how long that'll last Here at Wild Earth, we know it's not always possible to watch your favorite show live. If catching up on safaris is critical to you, then download the Wild Earth app and watch the catch-ups here first. Catch-ups are available on our app before YouTube. And in addition, there are cut-downs of each show for those who only have time to watch the best bits. That's incredibly cute. Download the brand new Wild Earth app today and don't miss out. Alrighty folks, ladies and gents, we got an update about a female leopard, um, which I can't see at this very moment. Um, it's quite exciting though to know that our afternoon has kicked off so well already and we might have a visual of a leopard death.
She's flicking her tail every now and again over there. There we go. Yes. Um, I'm not sure, Panda, if you can pick it up. Um, but yes, <laughs> let's hope we can uh, have a nice visual. Um, but the uh, afternoon is still early. It's very hot. So we might be very, very lucky a bit later even. Or even now if we just relax and spend some time. But well done on our trackers, I must say. Good good work. They did find them here this morning. Apparently one of the leopardesses with both her youngsters. And I believe it's Pixie Pan, isn't it? Yes. Pixie Pan. So let's see. Alrighty, it is very difficult at the moment. It is very, very thick after all the mound, all the amount of rain we had already in this lovely rainy season. And now it's summertime, so yes, it's <laughs> quite thick. Makes it more, more difficult to spot and to find animals during this time of the year. But it's also a very beautiful time with all the rainfall, all the life. Oh, there we go. She's actually walking now. Okay. Ha. Good afternoon, Tommy. Tommy is asking if Pixie Pan is the dominant leopardess of uh, Pridelands. Well, Tommy, she's definitely one of our most habituated leopards, um, leopardesses, as a matter of fact. Her cubs are growing up with us as well and are also becoming very habituated. It's incredible to see how they are now compared to a few months ago. Um, <clears throat> but there is quite quite a lot of leopards in this area. And I would say she, she rules. She rules this area. She's definitely a great mom. There she goes. Beautiful. Fantastic. This is marvelous. Uh, it's great to see some spots, eh? <laughs> Thank you so much for that update as well. We were on our way from Leopard Dam with the, with the wild dogs to go see if we might be lucky. And uh, on our way, we got an update from one of our other naturalists and uh, they said they just spotted her. So this is good stuff. What an exciting afternoon. This is fantastic. I am ever so happy. <laughs> we don't have a leopard on our bingo card. <laughs> Our woolly neck stalk flew off, this is so funny, but we do have a leopard and possibly three leopards. We have our wild dogs ticked off. Um, I'm not sure as I opened the show this afternoon if anyone saw that woolly neck stalk. If you did see the woolly neck stalk, please tell me because as we were leaving the wild dogs, the woolly neck stalk flew off and that was goodbye for the woolly neck stalk. I'm sure if we go back we might be lucky to to see the woolly neck stalk again but I would love to have some confirmation if anyone has seen the woolly neck stalk or if anyone has um, yeah, has seen this leopard as a matter of fact. So well camouflaged during this time of the year. All the trees and the shade of the leaves. I'm gonna also just reverse a little bit and then go forward to go see if we might have another lovely view of her. Oh my word, I can't tell you how excited I am. I haven't seen spots in a long time. <laughs> I started getting uh, getting depressed actually. <coughs> I'm just kidding. There's other amazing and awesome animals as well. But um, to see Pixie Pan again is definitely a really good start to my cycle, to this December stint here on the beautiful Pridelands. So I'm just going to keep my voice down because it is possible that she has a kill with her two cubs, her two youngsters. Good afternoon, White Mane. I thank you so very much. It's so lovely to be back. Thank you for watching and I really appreciate your comment. Thank you so much. And yes, definitely well done to Pixie Pan as well, to this gorgeous, gorgeous leopardess. 
and just like that, just like that, they disappear. So it's it's marvelous. It's out of this world. <sighs> My heart is beating so fast of how our afternoon has started, our bingo afternoon. <sighs> Let me see if we do have a leopard. We don't even have a leopard on. Can you believe it? This is incredible. No leopard on this bingo animal card, but we do have wild dog. That's for sure. We have lion, we have kudu, we have vulture, elephant, dragonfly, war dogs. So we are gonna still knock it out of this park, Pridelands Park. I don't know, Panda, can you see this leopard now? Hmm? Oh, you can actually hear bones crashing. That is incredible. So it must have been something small this these animals caught. Uh, Pixie Pan probably caught a little impala lamb and they still have very soft uh, cartilage, soft bone, and it allows them to actually bite straight through the bones. And that's why also sometimes you can find within lion scat and in leopard scat you can find that white because of um, that white color in their scat because of the bones. So I'm also going to sit quiet and just to listen them feeding on their kill. Okay, I think we're gonna still carry on to, to win the Bingo Sunday Cup. Myself and Panda, well done, my friend. Um, but in the meantime, let's give uh, Juma a very warm welcome. It seems like they are up and running and about to go on air. Let's head over to Tessa and Juma. Thank you so much, Berenice. It sounds like you have been on fire this afternoon. Pixie Pan and some dogs. I'm already jealous. Well, better late than never from the Juma side. Good afternoon, everyone. We started with our first animal for our bingo board, a Stienbach. And I'm super excited to beat everybody today. I think it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I think we might get a few different things here, but the Stienbach for now is the most important. We still need a team name, so myself and Igor are going to be chatting about that. But my name is Tess. I'll be taking out on Rooster for the afternoon. Behind the camera is Igor. There's his hand <laughs> knocking against everything on the way. But remember, you do need to confirm our sightings, so please do let me know once you've seen my very cute little male Stienbach. He's hanging out in the shade up on quarantine with some Impala friends and some Waterbuck friends. And I am really, really happy to see him. This is the same little male we've been seeing for the past few months with our resident pair that's normally up on quarantine. And it seems like recently he has been getting in on the action because he is spending more time with the female these days. Oh, sorry, I know I'm making a lot of noise. Spending a lot more time with the female than the actual big male is. I haven't seen the big male in a while. So perhaps he's trying to take over the territory. What do you think? Maybe he is. Maybe he is. But his horns, when I first saw him, were probably about <laughs> three millimeters above his hair on his head. He's definitely gotten a lot bigger since then. And you can see he's starting to mature nicely because his horns are really, really thick at the bottom. So very soon he's going to be at the age of breeding, which is quite, quite amazing. Such a small antelope and somehow already getting ready to mate at that size. Oh yes, Dianbeck is confirmed. Thank you so much everybody. My first sticker on the board. There it is. Rooster's a little differently shaped, so we've had to kind of squeeze the bingo board in here, but there's the Stienbach. It does not fit into the row that I was wanting to do, which is this one here. I'm going to do five across. Dwarf mongoose, elephant, impala, giraffe, and crested bot. So my plan is three hours down. Let's hope it works. But back to cute little Stienbach and the impalas in the background. Very, very cute pair combination. Massive size difference between those big male impalas and this tiny little Stienbach with his very little horns. Oh, they're sizing each other up. <laughs> it's two big males trying to get the young male not to interfere with their fight. 
perfectly positioned themselves behind an apple leaf tree as usual so we can't see the action but we can see the movement I suppose oh how kind of them they're coming out yay I have never seen an interaction between impalas and a steenbuck chasing each other around, but it would be interesting to see such little horns against such big horns. Now we've started seeing some pretty serious fights between the impalas on quarantine, and the other day I was really lucky I had a fight between two waterbuck, which we don't get very often. But it's definitely, you can see it's that time where everyone's testing dominance. And I think that's what the young Stianbuck has been doing as well. Now I know I have to have two separate sightings for the Impalas to count, but I won't be going anywhere. I will be staying to watch it. But this will contribute to my next row. <laughs> okay, we're going to stick around with these Impalas. I'm going to send you over to Ben, who is not feeling as humble as he was before the competition started. He tries to convince us he's not competitive, but as soon as those bingo pants are on, I'm telling you, he's a whole different human. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Yes, uh, I, I thought I'd try and be humble this afternoon, having achieved greatness last weekend with Tess. Uh, but now I'm going solo. I've decided to to uh, wipe the board clean and decided I need a solo oh, victory as well. But we've started well, despite a late start. We have some Egyptian geese, which is on my board, so I would love a corroboration of that, if you wouldn't mind. But I am competitive, Ben, this afternoon, and on camera I have the equally competitive Johan. Uh, we have every intention of, uh, after a late start, coming out of the blocks quickly and catching up as quick as we can. But let us show you the board for this afternoon. It's a bit of a mishmash of, uh, of things. There's no obvious... Um, line to go for there's the Egyptian geese which we have hopefully will be ticking off when we hear from you guys um, other than that I've got some tricky ones but I did get a tree of this morning so giraffe crocodile hyena tree of elephant took my eye because I like a bit of a challenge to find another agama I may just go back to the same tree I'm not sure if that's allowed I'm sure he's still there but there's a few tricky ones buffalo we haven't seen for a little while rhinos are a bit hit and miss Janet snake also caught my eye but i've seen two snakes in the last two days so that's doable um so i don't really have a plan for this afternoon the egyptian goose i don't think really helps because a bush baby is going to possibly be a step too far but this one's doable we might have to wait till late for a scrub here so if we have a close game perhaps later this evening that will be a good one but we will see. I don't have a set plan. I've decided I'm going to go to Chitwa because I've got birding envy after Tristan went to Chitwa Dam yesterday. And even though we're not officially birding, I'm always birding. So we're also carrying on. The other thing, of course, is we would like to be able to find um, Talumba. And again, Mawati was in this area this morning. Uh, he is a little bit of a, a wild card, as we all know. But Talumba's still here. She'll probably be remain unseen and pop on to dam cam at about half past eight like she normally does um, but that would be nice I've had some good luck with Talumba over the last few weekends so I'm hoping she graces us with her fabulous presence but those Egyptian geese for Galago Pan I believe I have confirmation of my Egyptian goose hold on let's immortalize this moment you're on let's put our spot on our Egyptian geese there we go number one the first of many uh, but yeah, my plan is I'm going to go and have a good, careful look around Gary Dam. Speaking to Tristan, who had Talumba's tracks this morning, he thinks she might well be in the Mawati somewhere. So I'm going to have a very careful look in this area. Uh, and then try Central, and then, yeah, head down towards Chitwa. It has been a hot day, uh, although the sun has just disappeared behind the cloud for a little bit of respite, which is nice. But yeah, I figured Chitwa Dam is as good a place as any to head this afternoon. And I may go and investigate Chitwa because I don't know the roads all that well. So I may go get lost on Chitwa this afternoon for a bit of excitement. Ooh, red faced mouse birds flying past.
Alrighty, so we have left our leopard, whoops, leopard dace. <laughs> Oopsie. We have left our leopard dace with her two cubs and they are busy feeding. And they were probably about 15 meters away from us in that thick stuff underneath that marula. So it is really hot at the moment and I'm sure if we go back we are going to uh, see them again, definitely. It's very close to uh, Leopard Dam, very close to our wild dogs we found this afternoon. So we are going to make our way now to the one and only in Dlovu Dam and hope to see if our woolly, uh, woolly necks talk. <laughs> A lot of tongue twisters this afternoon. Um, Willy Neck Stalk is there so that we can make sure everyone has seen our Willy Neck Stalk and we can actually tick it off our uh, bingo list of animals. That's obviously what our plan is this afternoon is to tick off as many many animals as possible and obviously if there's five in a row diagonally um, either or there needs to be five and they need to line up or link up with one another on the bingo card so let's see we actually did our intro with the woolly neck stalk um, but i don't know if everyone actually or anyone actually noticed the woolly neck stalk and then it flew off so no stress we are going to go back to follow up on our wild dogs and we are going to go follow up on our leopards as well um, just a little bit later we're going to now see if we can find some elephants, maybe some black hissing ants, matabele ants on the road somewhere. And then our woolly neck stalk. So if I was an animal, I'd probably be sleeping in the shade now. A nice afternoon a nap, especially a Sunday afternoon nap. My goodness. And then, uh, yeah, be close to or around water. I think that's what most animals would do during this time. So Impala's decided to abandon us, the males that were fighting. They've moved down towards the little link road to Gari Dam. And so we've quickly moved ourselves a little bit forward and found ourselves the females of the herd that those young males were fighting over. The one on the right is definitely still pregnant. And the others don't look like they are. But thank you to everybody for confirming my impalas. That's very exciting. And that does add to the row that I'm hoping to build on. Because I'm wanting to do this one here. So there is impala right in the middle. And I'm wanting to do... Elephant and dwarf mongoose on the way to Treehouse Dam and hopefully giraffe I find somewhere and crested barbet might be anywhere on quarantine or maybe Philemon's Dip or maybe Treehouse Dam. If not, I'll go towards the Mulawati. But yes, my top row is going to be dwarf mongoose, elephant, impala, giraffe, crested barbet. I've got to beat everyone, but particularly Ben. That's the plan. Got to beat Ben. Ben can't win. I helped him win last weekend, but that was just out of the goodness of my own heart, you know? <laughs> At least I can say I'm always competitive. It doesn't just come out for bingo. <laughs> okay, our Impala ladies are definitely enjoying a little patch of shade. They're not making it particularly easy to give a stunning view because of the, them being on the horizon. But I can appreciate why they're in the shade because we've been in the sun for about a minute and we're already feeling rather hot but I am interested to see when that female is going to drop because I don't know this year there's been a really serious delay in some of the lambs some of them not all some of them came early and now there's this massive gap and some of them are going to come late and I think it's because of the rainfall that we've had the rut lasted a lot longer than usual so the females estrus was a bit extended and all sorts of strange things happened and so now there's this really big gap and that's fine it's not a huge problem um, but the reason they try and synchronize it to be within a week or two of each other is more so that they've got a better chance of more little lambs surviving when the predators are around if you've got every female giving birth you're going to have almost double the herd size in the space of two weeks if you've got a gap you might have maybe the herd extending by a quarter
quarter or a third, and then a gap. And then, um, and then what happens is the predators have easier pickings with fewer lambs, and then more lambs come, and they've got easier pickings with those. The odds are a lot less for those impala lambs. Drew, thank you so much. I'm so happy that we could start with a little steer and buck and extend it to the impalas. And now we must do our best to find some of the others. Speaking of, actually, Igor, did you see impala lambs this morning? Yeah. Yeah. There aren't as many as I expected. I haven't seen any yet this afternoon, but we'll see if we can find some. Because it is going to be interesting to see how many more or less survive this year because of that split in the in the lambing season. A bit strange, really. A bit strange. Hmm. They are looking good, though, at least. There's so much food and water that they can quite easily find more than enough to keep them going. <laughs> Cindy V, thank you on Igor's behalf. <laughs> I'm sure Igor's enjoying it. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> He's very excited. Our little Stienbuck is coming closer. What's happening? Why are you coming closer, little dude? Thank you. That's very kind. Hello. I was going, wait, did you spot me? You weren't supposed to. I thought you were distracted. He's so cute though. He must do a lot of relying on that nose and those ears. Excellent eyesight as well, but being so low in the grass, you definitely got to listen and smell more than you can see. Imagine seeing the world from that perspective from something that's below the level of the grass. He's in a fairly short section of quarantine. If you go around the other side, the grass is really long. <laughs> hey, cutie pie. So the other day, he was actually on the other side of quarantine with his mom, and that's when we had a little fun with them. It was a, a great day. But anyway, I'll send you over to Berenice a bit further west in Pridelands and we will find some elephants, hopefully. Fantastic look what we have here, folks, ladies and gents. Look at this babies. Oh my word, this is so special. It is tiny bambinos. Look at that. So this is a small elephant a breeding herd we have here at Ndlovu Dam. And this is our second animal we can actually tick off our list. Uh, can I just get a, a firm, a firm from all our beautiful viewers that we have a marvelous, marvelous elephant sighting here at Ndlovu Dam. And it is, in fact, a beautiful little breeding herd. And there is even a lovely hammerkop there, just behind them. Oh my word, look at that baby. <laughs> that is so gorgeous. Oh my goodness, that is such a tiny baby. Whoop, whoop. We have confirmation, a big affirmation and a firm from our viewers. Yes, give me a high five, Panda. This is fantastic. I am so excited. It couldn't have started any better. We have wild dogs, we have leopards, and we also have a breeding herd of elephants in a matter of an hour. That is, that is insane. Obviously for Safari Bingo here on Wild Earth, Safari Live, it's, it's definitely uh, A4 away. I, I love this. And we're not doing a Ferrari Safari whatsoever. We actually do have a Ibis as well. Has anyone seen the Ibis? Has anyone seen that Hadida? Hadida Ibis. There's a blacksmith lapwing flying in along with a hammerkop as well. But we only have a Ibis. We have... Out of the... The water birds we have Egyptian goose, Ibis. Ibises aren't really water birds but... Um, 
and then the uh, woolly neck stalk. That's all water birds we have on our uh, bingo card. Nonetheless, might have some Egyptian geese flying in. We have these two young Ellie bulls still just drinking, quenching their thirst. And uh, there is a whole lot more uh, behind those uh, lead woods over there. Maybe this one will come join this, these two youngsters. And the breeding herd has left us now actually. They've gone behind the damn wall. So that was perfect, perfect timing once again. We are so fortunate and so lucky this afternoon. I cannot even tell you. Yes, look at that, look at that. <laughs> he looks like a cheeky young beast. He also just wants to have a bit of fresh water. And it's so great to see a little dam with quite a bit of water as well. That is good for the animals, for the birds, for the plants, for the environment, the whole of the ecosystem. It's just fantastic. These Egyptian geese, no ways. Panda, to the left of the dam, they're coming in, they are coming in. We'll just wait for them. Let's see who can actually see these Egyptian geese and who can confirm with me the Egyptian geese are coming in for the landing. Joan, thank you, women power. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not meaning to be a feminist or whatsoever, but I do believe in woman power. So thank you very much, Joan. I hope you are well this afternoon and that you are enjoying here with us on Pridelands. Can everybody see the Egyptian goose coming in? It's actually geese. There is two. It is a pair. The one has just entered the water there. Yes, we have confirmation on our Egyptian geese. Yes, I'm so happy about that. Well done. I'm going to definitely tick this one off. So we have three in a line. Yes, three in a row, actually the same row. And we are only short of Matabele ants and woolly neck stalks. Let's see if we will be lucky. Sure, if we go back to Leopard Dam, we're going to see our woolly neck stalk there was one there with the i think actually with with um with the blacksmith lap wings just so by the way righty so our elephants has left the building they've left the leopard dam um, but we still have our gorgeous birds that we can enjoy here. Do have some Cape Starlings flying in. They always used to be called the Cape Glossy Starling. And it's actually quite special to see that white-breasted cormorant all the way there in the middle. That is really, really lovely to see. We don't often get to see them here on Pridelands. Only recently, I know Chris started uh, seeing this guy specifically white breasted cormorant there we go here's our egyptian geese they just coming closer to show off a little bit to show off their gorgeous colors and they are actually not noisy there's nothing bugging them at the moment they are ever so happy to be in the water paddling through the water of Ndlovu dam well, that is absolutely fantastic. I think we might just wait here in the shade for a little while. I'm actually going to park in the shade and see what else is going to rock up here. Just for a short little while, we will go follow up on our wild dogs and our leopards. Gosh, this is such an exciting morning. Uh, I mean, afternoon. <laughs> <clears throat> My first day being back at Pridelands after being off for a whole two weeks. And just coming back from the fall the river this morning, it, it, oh, this is such a treat. I couldn't be any more happier.
Wild Earth Explorers, this one's for you. You stand a chance to head off to the wondrous Camp Fig Tree Mountain Safari Lodge, situated on the border of Addo Elephant National Park, for an unforgettable three night stay for two. Witness the incredible elephant herds at Addo firsthand and explore with an open vehicle safari tailored to you or a relaxing bush picnic. Sign up to be an explorer to treat yourself to a much needed. Alrighty, so literally we are just hanging around for a few more moments, maybe a few more minutes, here at uh, Ndlovu Dam. We just want to see if our woolly next stalk maybe lands here, as we would love to win this bingo Sunday. I will never forget this day if we do win <laughs> the bingo Sunday on the 4th of December 2022. Ooh. Lebo, I'd love to hear your question once again. There goes our beautiful little Egyptian geese. Does it rain less in Pridelands than in other reserves? I think it, it depends. It definitely depends. Um, ever since COVID, the, the weather patterns across the world has changed quite a bit. But last year, or I mean this year, even in winter, throughout the winter, we had some, some epic rainfall. It's, it's quite incredible. So. I think our rainfall is pretty much the same. Sometimes we have incredible, incredible floods of hundreds and hundreds of moles of uh, rainfall. So it, it definitely depends. Like this year, throughout the year, we had really good rainfall. And even now in our summertime, in our actual rainy season, whoops, Egyptian geese decided they had enough. They had a nice cool, cool down session, so. Alrighty, so since we are in the low felt, we do receive quite a bit of rain. Like I said, we do receive um, floods sometimes. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's actually very good. Not always the floods. 
The floods aren't always that great. Oh, it's just going to go back to our beautiful uh, cormorant over there. Hello, buddy. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> I think the cormorant is just like us waiting for the woolly neck stork to, uh, to fly in so that they maybe can have a bit of interspecific competition. Oh, it would be great to, to also just relax in the shade the whole day. I still have visual of our beautiful elephants, mainly the three Ellie bulls that was behind the breeding herd. And even during this time of the year, the, the Ellie's are all over the place. There is an abundance of water, there is abundant abundance of vegetation for them. And then there is cows. And then, uh, yes, there's also a few cows within these breeding herds that is an estrus and the bulls are going crazy to follow these breeding herds. Well, let's see what else we can find and tick off our list. Uh, but for now, let's head over to Tessa to see if she can at least manage to put one thing on her list. With the approval of everybody watching, I will add another dot to my board. Thank you, Berenice. With the hippo at Treehouse Dam. Isn't he beautiful? He's being a little shy, but I'm sure he is really enjoying this wind that's keeping his back and his face cool. And I think he's probably also enjoying the fact that there aren't 30 elephants swimming in the dam with him like they were on the weekend. <laughs> Because he looked like he was getting a little protective of his space. And you can imagine why. I mean, this is his waterhole. How dare a herd of elephants come and intrude and splash around and make a noise and push him towards the dam wall. Very natural behavior for a hippo to be a little bit protective of his space. But ultimately, in the bigger picture, it doesn't actually affect him. He can just move out the way happily. But he does look a lot more peaceful today. He was agitated when the Ellies were here. I, on the other hand, was hoping the ego because we need Ellie's, but at least we're getting a hippo. We're getting one of the two we were hoping for. Even if he is being incredibly shy. I can hear a crested ball, but I need that as well. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, yeah. That was quick. Thank you, everybody. Confirmation of my hippo. Okay, let's put that on. Down here at the bottom. Might not be as many as Berenice. She did have a bit of a head start, but at least we've got two in one row now. However, saddlebull stalk and leopard will be quite hard to find. And then crested barbet I've just heard, so I'm hoping for that so that we can start on this as well. Add to the impala. That would be very nice. I like that idea. Yay. I need to see if I can find that crested barbet though, because I can hear it calling and I think it's in one of these trees to our left. So I'm going to be scanning on this side. Let me get my binoculars. Well, sadly, we did just lose Tess there, but we will be back. We're also here in Juma currently. And really no complaints about that, but we're just going to have to have a little pan around and see what might be going on. So I'm just going to take us across. And it seems my controls have also frozen now. I might just take us a second or so just to get that going on and let us have a look and see what is happening here in Gari Dam I can also hear Tess's crested barbet Just gonna have a quick little pan around and see if we can't see anyone that might be around. A couple of 
Pete may froze as well off in the distance virtual starlings it really seems like quite an empty afternoon across here Ooh, what is that a tree that looked like an animal So it's just going to be one of those little pans. Nothing we can really do if the animals don't want to show themselves. Woodlands Kingfisher. Really not much else going on. We can have a look at these terrapins though. Why not? Enjoying a little sunbathe over here. And of course with Dewey being across in Treehouse Dam, they don't have a friend to play with just yet. They like to climb all over him. You'll just also be able to hear those brown-headed parrots. Always cool audio listening to parrots. Not quite fun watching the terrapins. Nice to see them moving. So we're sticking in Juma, then we're just jumping across to Tess. He needs to see if she has got another animal for her board. Oh, thanks, Alex. Thank you, thank you. I'm super excited because this is what I need to add to that row with the Impala. I'm so excited. It's a crested bob. It's sitting quite well hidden in a knob thorn tree, having a grooming session. And I'm hoping we might even get lucky and hear it calling. That would be a bonus. But for now, it is distracted by using the shade to give itself a bit of a preening session. I can hear the hippo behind me making a noise he's popping under the water but this is that really distinctive yellow black and red bird with a couple white spots and a kind of rocking mohawk when it's up the crest unfortunately it is down at the moment and I don't know if this one's male or female it's very tough to tell the only real difference externally is that the female is slightly oh there it goes slightly less colorful Slightly less colorful. Oh, it's in the thickets just to the top right, almost directly above that little dove. I don't know if we'll get that again, but I'm hoping you got a glimpse of the crested barbet. Yay! Confirmed, confirmed, confirmed. Put it on there. Crested barbet. Now I need giraffe, elephant, and dwarf mongoose. Let's do it. We need to do this. I was really hoping we might have elephants down here at the dam. I was also hoping there might be giraffes around. So we're going to do some loops from here to Philemon's Derp and back again in all of those places. Philemon's cut line, see if we can find one. Since the barbet went away, let's see if we can find the hippo having a bit of a play session. I'm having a stretch of my legs in the wind and he is indeed having a play session. Look at him. You might just see a foot or a jaw popping out the water every now and then. Oh no, Ben's found something I'm looking for. No, I think if I keep talking, you have to stay with me for really, really long and then you can't go to Ben and then Ben won't get the dot. Would that work? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, let's go see what Ben's got and then tell me where he is so I can go there too. But it's supposed to be only one animal per... <laughs> uh, right, well, we've found an elephant. Now, the thing is, I've got three elephants on my board for some reason, so I have to choose which dot that I want to go with after you guys have confirmed the sighting, which I think it's fairly self-explanatory what we're looking at here. Uh, so I'll have to choose which of my elephants to put a dot on, as it were. Uh, but one female here, and there's a youngster somewhere up on the bank. So we're in the Muluatu, actually in this area, because we're kind of just having a look for where the dogs were last seen this morning. 
Um, yeah, we just bumped into it. We can just see, so there's one female and then there's a calf that's hiding behind the tree at the moment. I'm sure there's probably a couple more in the area, but possibly over this ridge. But always nice to see elephants. Didn't see any elephants this morning and didn't see any elephants yesterday. There's the little one. Thank you for my elephant confirmation. I will add my sticker, which gives me two in a row, along with my Egyptian goose from earlier. So we are catching up. But it sounds like everybody else is ticking off things left, right and centre. Covered in crusty mud, this female. She's had a nice mud bath recently, which will actually be helping her protect her skin from the sun. The baby looks as if it kind of wants to come down here. It looks a little bit nervous. I'm wondering if it doesn't like the idea of the steep slope. Oop. And something gave our little Natal spur fowl a fright. I'm just having a look around me. I don't see what upset it. Hello, little one. Having a munch on this young jackalberry. We talked about those red leaves this morning, those young red leaves. Interesting. I wonder what's bothered that Franklin. I can see the Franklin. He's hopped up into a tree, but he's not giving a full-blooded alarm call. It's more of an irritated Franklin rather than a scared Franklin. Uh, normally their alarm call is more of a grrr, grrr, much more of a harsh rattling noise. Well, with dogs in the area, it's always worth keeping an eye out. So the chances are we might get an indication of where they are uh, from listening to the birds like normal even the elephants as well if the elephants will see the dogs it will potentially react she's got quite narrow tusks this female huh? quite thin tusks well, you can see all those sensory hairs around the base of the tusk and around her chin, uh, which is just a good way for her to be able to sort of feed, make sure she's putting food in her mouth uh, in the correct place, because of course they can't see under their chins with that great big head. Okay, we're going to have to just turn the car because they've gone behind us. Two seconds. Welcome back to the land of the driving. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We should be able to give you another view, but I still only see two, which is strange. I'm sure the rest of the herd will be somewhere. I haven't heard any rumblings, but of course they will be in constant contact with one another, even if we <laughs> cross those back legs, uh, even if we can't hear them, that infrasonic sound. I'm sure there's some others behind us somewhere. I see a few fork-tailed drongos flying around as well, which is normally a telltale sign of some big animals close by because they're disturbing all of those insects. And the drongos are feeding on the, the d insects that fly up out of the grass, like moths and crickets and grasshoppers and things. Same principle as when we have uh, cattle egrets following buffalo and herds of cattle out in the more rural areas for the same reason. They're disturbing things in the grass and creating a little, I would say, like a mobile smorgasbord for the birds. Those drongos are very, very clever. They've learnt this. I've even had them sort of hovering next to the tyres whilst we're off-roading. I had one take a, a bug off somebody's shirt once when I had guests in the back. They've learnt that we provide them with food. But this is why I thought we'd take the Maluati today. It's very warm this afternoon and figured some good shade that we might bump into some animals down here. Well, would you look at this beautiful scene with our gorgeous harem of Impala. A whole bunch of babies. How cute is that? All these lambs. This is my first 
Impala lambs for this season. And I think actually I won the bet here on Pridelands because I said 10th, the 10th of November that's going to be the first Impala lamb that's going to drop. I think I won that bet actually. I'm still waiting for my prize. But nonetheless, we also have this, these gorgeous animals on our bingo board. And I just want some confirmation. Anybody out there that can confirm we have impalas. We have a whole herd of impala. We even have a crush. Yes! Woohoo! We do have confirmation on our impala. Look at this. This is so gorgeous. I mean, look at this lamb. It's probably a few weeks old or even a few days even and it's already browsing incredible um, but yes I just I just want to also show you how proud we are we have our yes there we go panda my champion we have Egyptian goose we have impala we have elephant and we have wild dog we have four on our bingo animal uh, board so very very happy very happy about that we are gonna definitely still head to pixie pan and her cubs on their kill most probably impala lamb they caught and that they're busy feeding on so it's not going to be too long for them to to uh, be at that kill oh this is gorgeous i just love seeing impala lambs this time of the year i think the latest one i've seen being born was when i still work in the sabi sand and it was in april 14th of april there was still an impala lamb being born incredible it always shows you different hey eh? we we sometimes tend to forget that we will never know it all especially out here in the natural world in, in the bush felt and Not everything is a... Yeah, that one was born today. My goodness. Still struggling to walk a bit. Very cute. We also have Swainson spur fowl all around these impala. Alfred, good afternoon. Alfred, you will normally find Matabele ants at uh, termite mounds, for sure. Termite mounds on the road, busy crossing the road, carrying maybe um, some morphs or some um, food around even. Um, and yeah, if it is on the road, maybe it's something that they are uh, currently feeding on. So, and then you'll see them just crossing the roads in those um, trains that they make, that they form, and you can just hear them hissing. That's why their names change to black hissing ants, but we all know them as matabele ants, and I think we will always know them as matabele ants. But yeah, normally um, and quite frequently at um, old or still active uh, termite mounds or dense sites even. <laughs> so, my wish is to find some matabele ants here for us and for you this afternoon. That will be, that will be amazing. All right, this is a really beautiful, lovely sight. See all the babies so active and so healthy and um, all so brand new to this to this whole new world. It's it's incredible incredible for them to be thinking they are going into this this world which they have never seen before and they are so tiny. Look at them crossing the road there. Alrighty, so Tessa, watch out. We're on your back, or are you on our backs? Um, let's head over to Tessa to see what uh, she is up to and to see what she's got in Juma.
<laughs> Bernice, I'm catching up so fast. If I get one more on either row, I've got three. So I'm catching up. This is in fact not on my board, but how can you not appreciate a beautiful big white rhino when you have one? And it's covered in mud. So it's at a mud wallow somewhere. It's not giving us the greatest visual, but that's okay. You can't not appreciate it because it's just incredible. And I think there are two here, but the other one is further back. So we haven't really gotten a clear picture of that one. But at least you're seeing a really cute little rhino butt being followed around by fork-tailed drongos that are looking for insects while they're moving. Bye, rhino bum. Bye. Not on my list, but so worth it. So worth it. We were actually looking for dwarf mongooses and we bumped into the rhinos. And uh, there is a little termite mound in the back there where the rhino initially was eagle and I was hoping that might have some mongooses in it, but it doesn't look very active at the moment. You can see though that it has definitely been used by dwarf mongooses at some point. There's some nice entrances in there. I don't see any fresh latrine sites at the bottom though, so maybe this one wasn't used as recently. But I do want to keep looking for dwarf mongooses. The rhinos moved into the thickets, so we are not going to follow that one. The other one is coming out there at the back, just to the right of the termite mound. There's a bit of a glimpse of rhino. I'm just going to give it a little bit of time to see if that one comes out more. Because it is moving towards the open area. Absolutely beautiful. Giant bush lawn mowers. Of course, this is one of the few species that um, I don't think I've ever met someone that hasn't appreciated a rhino when they've seen it in person like this. Um, or actually managed to spend some time with one. Just because they're these enormous animals, but they are so calm, they're so quiet, they're so gentle. And of course, highly, highly, highly endangered. The plight of the rhino, I'm sure, is well known to everyone. But in case it's not, we are fighting hard to protect these rhinos from poaching. And that's why they are dehorned, to protect them. And of course, it's something we'll keep fighting against. <laughs> Omar, water holes are pretty much central in the bingo strategy for most people, but it really depends on what you've got on your board. I mean, some of our boards, so the way we do it is we, we generally tend to just draw a board randomly from the pile. And most of them are pretty water hole dependent, things like hippos, crocodiles, a lot of the bird species, which are of course drawn to water. Hippos, rhinos, elephants, those are all drawn to water. And then you'll have things like nyalas and things like that, which you're looking for thickets. So maybe the Mulawati or uh, even quarantine. Waterbuck, impalas, kudus, all these things have to find water. So water holes are pretty central in the strategy. However, if it is a miserable cold day, water holes aren't going to make much of a difference unless you have something very specific like a grey heron, a hippo, a crocodile, uh, maybe a saddle-billed stork, hammerkorp, something like that. And so it really just depends what's on your board. For us today, uh, nothing on our board was, was water hole dependent other than a hippo and a saddle-billed stork and a crocodile. But um, the other things we could find pretty much anywhere, we just knew that there was a higher possibility they would be coming to a water hole because it's a hot day. So that's, that's usually the strategy is try and stick to the shady areas, the drainage lines and the water holes to find the most species possible at any given time because that's where everything is attracted. So yeah, it's all about knowing the animal's behaviors, knowing the weather and how it's going to impact them and going off of me as well of where you might find specific animals. Sometimes they're there day after day like specific hippos um, or the cats, for example, if there's been a log sighting of wild dogs or something, then you'll remember that and add that to your route as well. And that's always quite fun. But yeah, it really just depends. But I think what we're going to do, since our rhinos have disappeared and there are no dwarf mongooses there, we're going to carry on very, very slowly. There are a couple more termite mounds that I want to check along this area and hopefully we'll be catching up and overtaking Berenice very soon. Hello everyone, 
My name's Tanya Ray. I'm from the United Kingdom. I am absolutely thrilled to have won a stay at the Itali Safari Lodge. For me, this is like a dream come true. And I would just like to say, thank you very much, Wild Earth. Sign up and it could be you getting out there experiencing it for yourself. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Alright, so we've still got the dogs. They are look as if they are slowly mobile east into Torchwood. We are on Cheetah Cut Line at the moment, so it may just be a very quick view. I'm just going to see if I can move slightly one so we can get a, a view of the other ones in case they do cross over and disappear. They're kind of milling around on the cut line at the moment. Just see if we can squeeze past one of these other vehicles. And you a clear view but if they do go east from here unfortunately we won't be able to follow them okay there we go some of them lying on the road you work with that you want perfect there we go there are a couple of the adults on the road they're still enjoying the shade it is very warm this afternoon so i can't imagine they're going to be going at top speed uh, probably just still deciding what the plan of action is. They have spent the day on Juma. They must have been sleeping somewhere uh, in and around the Mulwati, which is where they were left this morning. There's massive ears. Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> oh, relocate to that spot. Sometimes you actually see them just like domestic dogs do, sort of digging in the sand just to expose that slightly uh, cooler sand under the surface and lying in it. And we've got the two pups are lying in the shade of the marula tree just to the right of these two. There's another one further up, now gone flat on the road, so it might mean they stick around here for a little while. But officially these pups are already on Torchwood. But as long as they stay close to Cheetah Cut Line, we'll be able to get some visuals. Even if it is brief, it's still always an honour to spend time with this predator. Of course, the second most endangered predator in Africa, behind the Ethiopian wolf. Which, as the name suggests, does not occur here. Uh, no, Morgan Wild Dogs are not on my board, unfortunately. But, uh, say, my plan of attack for this afternoon was to... Take what nature gives me, and if the bush gods see it um, appropriate to gift me the wind, then I'm sure they will do. Uh, but I think if we've got dogs, 
even if they're not on my board, I can't pass up that pass up that opportunity. I'm sure everybody appreciates that. Everybody panting quite heavily in the heat. This evaporative cooling, just like dogs do at home. So as they're panting, they're passing uh, air over their tongue, and that's basically sort of how they sweat. They'll be expelling heat over that tongue. Just let that saliva basically evaporate, and that actually does cool you down. It's the whole concept, of course, why we as humans sweat produces water on the skin and then the air blows across that water, it evaporates and in, by evaporating it actually cools the skin. What a lovely scene. There were four adults. I don't see the fourth. I think the fourth one is the one that we saw originally that's maybe lying behind one of the trees a little bit further into Torchwood. But everywhere else, everyone else seems to be quite content with lying on the road here in the shade, which is great for us. So alert, eh? Especially this one. He keeps sort of trying to lie down. They both do try to lie down and relax, but then they got they hear anything or sense any movement, you can see how alert they are. But it doesn't, doesn't look as if they've eaten this afternoon. Remember, they do have a very fast metabolism. Uh, and the fact that they have been sleeping most of the day from when we left them, I think the last time they were seen was around about 8 o'clock. Uh, and they haven't gone far from that spot, so they will have laid up during the day. Whatever they ate this morning will have been happily digested now, and they will be very much looking for food again this afternoon. Okay, we're going to stick with these dogs while we can. Let's uh, send you across to Tessa. Well done, Ben, on some wild dogs just in the nick of time on Cheetah Cut Line. Well, well done. On this side, this takes me up to three. A big elephant bull, and he is looking so muddy. It is amazing. I think he's had a very fresh mud bath. Now he's looking for some greenery and maybe a scratching post. But he is disappearing very quickly. He's already moved a good couple meters in the last kind of 45 seconds. <laughs> he's making it very tough for us to follow him. I'm going to try and roll us back. Oh no, Rusty's not going to roll. I'll try and reverse us back. But he is disappearing straight into the thickest section, straight into the sun in bush willows, which is really, really tough. Sorry, Eagle. Very bright, but you can at least see that mud glowing on his back, nice and wet. I'm sure he's going to enjoy a good scratch on those trees later, try and get some of that mud off, take some parasites with it. And he is just a really, really massive boy. Doesn't look like it when he's hidden behind the trees like that, but look at those tusks. They're nice and thick. He's got a massive forehead, although he's doing a great job of hiding it. And I think it's just been so wet this year that the bush willows are a lot more full and tall than they were. So, although he doesn't look very big behind the trees, believe me, he is a good few tons and very strong. <laughs> he's slowly putting some food in his mouth there. I'm hoping he's going to come back this way. I don't think he will. I think he'll go find some shade. But I'm really just hoping he comes back this way because I'm definitely not going to follow, in, follow him into such a big, thick section. This is the worst block. The worst block to off-road. And this is where I got stuck. I don't know if you all remember, but when I was following the Lion Pride and Chanty had to come pull me out, this is where I got stuck, just here. Okay, there is my elephant. So that makes three in that row. So I need giraffe and dwarf mongoose. Dwarf mongoose will be easier than giraffe, I reckon, but we gotta try, we gotta try. I'm hoping somebody finds giraffe, but he's disappearing so fast now. You can just kind of see the tops of his ears and that ridge on his spine. 
as he's moving off into the thickets. But thank you everybody for confirming the elephant. At least I've caught up with Berenice, unless she's found more. <laughs> but he really is disappearing. There's more of a view of the drongos than there is of the elephant. So I'm going to go find some mongooses. I'll send you back to Ben with wild dogs. Hopefully they keep him distracted for long. Monopolize the road so that they don't drive in front of us. <coughs> oh, sorry, everybody, welcome back. We do still have the dogs here. I was just repositioning quickly there onto the road. So we could get a better view. So they are lying on torchwood now, but they are enjoying a little bit of shade, but certainly all heads up and alert. I still only see, th do you see four adults there or just the three? You only see, four adults and one. can you see the fourth adult? I only see three adults and two pups from where I, I am. But I think this behind the bush. Ah, uh, okay. The benefit for you, one, of course, is he's higher up than I am with the camera in the back, so we've got more of an eye-level view. Maybe there's one hiding around there. Oh, I have to watch their reactions here. Just a little report from one of the other vehicles that's just arrived in the sighting saying there are some Impala mobile towards this area. So we'll see if the dogs pick up on that and maybe chaos will ensue. If that is the case, though, we'll just have to hope that they don't go deeper into Torchwood. over my shoulder if I see if I can see where these impalas are and they're just coming up. I don't see anything heading in this direction. Okay, apparently there is a herd, a little herd somewhere south of us that is slowly coming up into this area. I'm just trying to see the wind is kind of in the impala's favour. It's actually blowing the scent of the dogs towards the impala. Brad Cat, you are right indeed. A painted painted dog, or of course painted wolf, is their sort of proper other name, and that's also their uh, scientific name, Lysenon pictus, basically means painted wolf. But they do have the most incredible markings. It's kind of like a uh, uh, a painting there. There's sort of splashes of different colours. There's fawns and the blacks and the whites, which makes it at least relatively easy for us to identify individuals if you see them fairly regularly. And of course, for a lot of the uh, conservation work that is being done for these dogs. The Endangered Wildlife Trust, particularly in Kruger, uh, is constantly monitoring the axes. It is easier to, to radio tag them, as it were, and uh, try and understand better their movements and their, their home ranges. Uh, I have to say, thankfully, I haven't seen many animals with collars on uh, in this area, I've seen two or three different packs of dogs now and haven't noticed a collar. Uh, I'm personally, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I understand it's less intrusive than putting something inside the animal, which is done in some places, like a, a little satellite receiver. Uh, but I never, and from a photographic perspective, it's never nice to see an animal with a collar on, even if I understand, understand that it is performing a good service for the sake of the species. It's always a bit of a shame to see that collar. But as I said, it is important. The more we understand, um, the better our chance of conserving. I mean, the delicate situation that these dogs are in with human expansion and habitat loss, these areas like the, the Kruger National Park and Medikwe um, are very, very important.
Most of them were quick because it was more water back on the skin. There's oil on the skin. And that oil had to get loose. Righty, so we are back at Leopard Dam. We still have visual of our wild dogs. The pack of four wild dogs. Um, it's a good time to just stop and watch them as it's starting to get cooler. And yes, these guys. Can anyone tell me when do wild dogs hunt? Are they nocturnal? Are they diurnal? Or are they crepuscular animals? We are currently just sitting watching our Egyptian geese. They were on our list and we did put a sticker on their names, which is great. We're hoping for our woolly neck stork to fly in again, but it doesn't seem like the woolly neck stork wants to return. But lots of activity of other species of birds. We do have our grey go away birds. So I'd love to know uh, if anybody saw when I did my introduction when we started the show this afternoon. I'd love to know if anybody saw our Willy Neck Stalk. He was in the water, ever so tall. And whilst I was doing my introduction, he was standing behind me in the water. So if anybody can tell me, yes, they have seen the Willy Neck Stalk, I'd be so, so happy. Because then I got distracted and we came around, we found these wild dogs lying down. And then the Willy Neck Stalk flew off. Well, we do have some uh, pearl-breasted swallows. We do have grey go way birds, red-headed weavers. We have Egyptian geese. And our woolly neck stalk still didn't return. So question for, for our viewers. Who saw the woolly neck stalk in the water behind me when I did my introduction? So, yes, just coming back to my question real quick. Who saw the Willy Neck Stalk when myself and Panda started uh, the show this afternoon? I'll probably just drive around to go see what our wild dogs are. Or up to they're still just lying oh, fantastic well done Todd for that great answer and they are indeed diurnal animals the African wild dogs they they do hunt in early mornings before it gets too hot for them especially in the summertime and then this time it's about 530 1730 so half past five uh, they should slowly start getting up and that's always nice to see when they start interacting with one another because they are so extremely social and quite vocal <coughs> so well done Todd okay so I'm guessing no one saw <laughs> The Willy Neck Stalk, when we opened the show this afternoon. Um, but 
Alrighty, we also have some beautiful red-billed buffalo weavers. But anyway, let's head over to Tessa to see if she can get some something over there in Juma. Let's see what she is up to. Oh, thank you, Berenice. I hope that that woolly neck stalk is confirmed rather quickly because I think I've just overtaken your lead. This is item number four on the same row for me. Dwarf mongoose. It's being a little camera shy right now. There we go. They're kind of running up and down the termite mound and they've been coming back out over the top to check us out in typical dwarf mongoose fashion. They've split up, one has gone back right, three have gone back left, one's been coming up from the bottom. So we're just giving it a little bit of time because there you go, I can see a little head popping out in that thicket again on the left eagle. They just like to, they like to come and investigate. There you can see it moving. You see it there on the edge of the termite mound, so kind of top right of your frame now there. Little cutie pie. Don't you want to come back out, little one? They are being super, super, super high. Coming out the bottom now. There, it's on the top now. It's coming. Cool. There we go. On the top of the termite mound eagle, quickly. <laughs> there it is. Again, being very shy, perfectly positioned behind a leaf. <laughs> oh, how cute are those little whiskers? It's not often you get a backlit view of a dwarf mongoose and can see its little tongue and the little whiskers. Hey, cutie patootie, we are talking about you. While we've got a decent view of you, we will keep you there. And thank you very much, everyone, for the confirmation. I'll put the stick, now that it's going, I'll put the sticker on. <laughs> I was going to wait a while and see. Oh, there we go. It's climbing the tree. So the tree is a bit of an extra access into that termite mound. It's probably been hollowed out by termites. So it makes a great little vantage point and exit point for these little dwarf mongooses. But let me put my sticker on quickly while they've all disappeared. Thank you very much, everyone. Just to show you, that is now ooh, four in a row. I need giraffe. I need giraffe really, 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 really badly. That's what I need. Come on, giraffe. So our plan is to go and do Philemon's cut line back up towards quarantine, maybe towards Gari Dam, everywhere that I've seen giraffes recently. Hopefully I found some. Let's hope. Our mongooses are still being super shy though. But I'm very happy we got that little backlit view. Oh, did you find one, Eagle? Being shy in the little log. Yeah, they've got lots of these beautiful little tunnel networks and it's amazing how it all connects. You might even find that log, even though it's a good five, six meters away from the termite mound, might even be connected to the termite mound underground. Because what we see on top of the ground is just a fraction. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's just the tip of the termite mound and the rest is underground in a massive tunnel network. So that distance in between that log you can see on the left and the termite mound you can see on the right, that's probably connected underground. And you'll find a whole different extensive network of tunnels and this is really useful for them because not only does it mean the colony can expand really nicely but it means they've got a lot of different entrance and exit points so in case of an emergency they have somewhere to go speaking of going i'm going to find giraffes now that our dwarf mongooses are being super shy but i'll send you to ben who's still got the wild dogs Yes, well, well done everybody. Everyone seems to be ticking off uh, bingo uh, squares, I suppose we could say. Um, we are not, however, but I can't not watch wild dogs if they are here. So maybe we'll have a, a late flurry and catch up quickly and see if those bush gods are in our favour today. Uh, the dogs are still lying here. We're just They are just to the east of Cheetah Cut Line, so I'm on Cheetah Cut Line as we speak. Um, if they were to go east, that we wouldn't be able to follow them, but currently everybody seems to be quite relaxed. Still waiting for this alleged group of impala to come into the fray, but I keep checking in the area that they said they'd seen impala, but there has been no sign. But I'm not surprised because, say, the wild dogs, as we've said a few times, do have a very distinctive scent, even to us. It's a fairly 
obvious scent if they've been in an area and the wind is blowing in the direction of that uh, herd of impala that was seen and I have no doubt that those impalas have picked up on the scent probably pulled a u-turn and decided that uh, what is in front of them does not smell too uh, fruitful let's put it that way There's a lot of conjecture whether predators take into account wind direction, particularly with lions, and it does seem from, there have been numerous studies done on, on this, I can't quote you individual resources, but the general consensus is that predators don't take wind into account. They don't think, ah, oh, the wind is blowing this way, so I will circle around uh, so that the wind is in my favour. They may well do it automatically because they rely so much on smell. Um, that obviously the wind, the wind is blowing towards them, they've got a better idea of what is in front of them. So often successful hunts happen into the wind from a predator perspective, but I am unaware of any published uh, confirmation that any predator is able to utilise the wind to their benefit and i.e. sort of go through that cognitive process of right, the wind is blowing from left to right, therefore I should go in this direction to ensure a better hunt. Most predators are simply opportunistic with what is put in front of them. One that I, I discovered recently isn't, and we actually, it actually came up, I'm trying to think where we saw it, possibly on a clip uh, when we did the Halloween, was that Porsche jumping spider, which seems to be one of the very few predators that is able to make kind of a three-dimensional map of what it wants to hunt, have a good look, and then plan a route of attack in order to remain unseen and sort of use its surroundings to its benefit. Uh, which if you think about it, for a spider to have the processing power to be able to plan an attack is, is quite horrifying, <laughs> actually, especially if you don't like spiders. But of course, dogs rely mostly on their stamina. They can hit close to 70 kilometers an hour in a flat sprint, and they will keep up a pace of, you know, a good 40 kilometers an hour over two or three kilometers. And at that pace, that's normally more than enough to run any prey that they are chasing into the ground. So if that prey cannot get to suitable ground or elude the dogs, and once they've been targeted, it's a bit like trying to shake off a missile lock in a fighter jet, I think. And so when they are chasing as a group, their success rate is thought to be as much as well, 70%, some even suggest 90%, which I think is a little excessive. Todd, hmm. I, on, the simple answer is again, I don't know. I don't know every predator in Africa, but certainly of the major predators down here, I think they probably do have the largest ears. I'm wondering with a bat-eared fox, if you could consider that a predator. Um, probably has similar side, size ears, and obviously it's about half the size of a dog, so in proportion to its body size, maybe a bat-eared fox would be a little bit bigger. I'm trying to rack my brains of any other predators further north in Africa that I can recall. But I can't think of anything else, so it could well be, Tom, to be honest. Could well be. You can see they are massively oversized ears for their heads and constantly twitching. They'll also help with cooling as well to some extent. Remember that when they're running and their body temperatures are going up so high, especially running long distances at high speed in Africa, those um, uh, the sort of the, the membranes in the skin there of the ears, it'll it'll help to to cool the blood in the ears with that thin skin. And the other thing dogs can do as well, we talked about panting earlier, is they have the ability to raise their body temperature to higher than the ambient temperature to some extent. Obviously, if it's 48 degrees or something outside, they wouldn't be able to. But they can raise their body temperature high, but not too high that they would have a stroke, uh, which would obviously be a concern if the brain gets too hot. But by raising your body temperature higher than the ambient temperature, that stops you from sweating. Um, and obviously not losing water in that regard actually does help. I know we were talking about sweating before, but if you can raise your body temperature above the ambient temperature, you don't feel the heat so badly. So lots of clever adaptations, these dogs, and they say they should be a highly successful, well, they are a highly successful predator. The, the issue has always been that, say, they've been persecuted, particularly in the early 1900s, they were considered vermin and they were killed and poisoned indiscriminately. Uh, there were certainly no protection methods there, and huge numbers were taken out in the early part of this century. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, it's habitat loss. Uh, I think if you have a reserve and you want to have dogs introduced into your reserve, you have to have an absolute minimum of 10,000 hectares available. And even then, you'll be lucky to keep a pack of dogs within any fence they'll burrow underneath.
the happy pack of dogs, you need about 35,000 hectares. If you consider Juma itself, is uh, certainly nowhere near that. That's why we, we have multiple packs coming in and out on certain days. We are just merely a part of their home ranges. And we obviously overlap with quite a few. But remember, it's a home range, not a territory. So they don't demarcate their territory. They don't necessarily defend their territory. Uh, there are no middens, there's no urine spraying. So it is possible for two packs to bump into each other. Uh, and if that does happen, well, it could go either way. Sometimes interactions are friendly, sometimes they can be aggressive, but generally the bigger pack will just chase off the smaller pack and everybody will go back to doing what it is that they're doing. But I think after we finish this, these dogs seem to be going flat and I'm sure they're going east. Their general direction when they were found was east. They came along Mumba. They've already crossed the cut line. So I think after this, we will probably leave them as I need to tick off uh, a couple more stickers on this board if possible. Um, and they are, they're definitely going to go into Torchwood at some point when they get up. Unless there's impalas turn up on our side, of course but the wind is also blowing to them from the Torchwood side, which is probably dictating their general um, movement. Remember, dog's sense of smell is incredibly acute. And I don't know how close we can get, but they've got massive nostrils as well, just to also help get enough oxygen into those lungs. His ears never stop twitching. Huh? They mentioned earlier the scientific name is Lycion Pictus. Um, obviously, I do. I enjoy my Greek mythology with my love of the stars, and a lot of the stories are from Greek mythology. And actually the word Lycion, which is used as the genus for wild dogs, also comes from Greek mythology. Lycion was the first king of Arcadia. Um, and so the story goes that at one point, in order to test Zeus's omnipotence, um, King Lycion tried to feed Zeus a plate of human flesh. Some say even it was one of Zeus's sons that he tried to do that with, and Zeus obviously being. Zeus uh, saw through this charade and in punishment turned him and all of his sons into wolves and according to the Greeks that's the origin of the wolf uh, so why they have the name Lycion for the genus and Pictus is referring to that painted um, coloration we discussed earlier. Hi, my name is Leslie Miller and I'm from Olympia, Washington. I'm so excited to have won a three night stay at Jackie's Tree Lodge and visit Medique Game Reserve. I started watching Wild Earth in 2019 in anticipation of my first trip to Africa in February of 2020. After that trip and through the pandemic, Wild Earth helped keep me connected to nature and Africa. I'm so happy to be able to return in person. Sign up today and you could be the one experiencing it for yourself.
done Tessa well done Ben you guys there on Juma doing really good jobs uh, we're still on three <laughs> three uh, horizontally and then two down in a row uh, but it's all good we are here in the area of pixie pan and her cubs and one of her cubs actually just caught a tortoise so I'm driving around to go see if we can have better visual and that is so 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 awesome to see a leopard cub a leopard youngster catching a tortoise very very interesting that's not something you get to see every day not at all so I'm just gonna go around to see if we can have a have a look at these spots spot the spots that would be nice it is quite rocky so you all should hold on hey hold on to your things before they bump off the vehicle so from where we could have seen we're just gonna go around to see if we can get better visual but it is quite a rocky area um, but I think it's gonna be very very worth it to see this site to have a, an awesome little visual on this little guy so I don't know if it's the uh, little female or if it's the little male because it's a brother and a sister so if you can just bear with us for a few seconds and then we're gonna just uh, off-road here for a while I'm gonna put my vehicle in low range if you go off-road you must always switch over to low range because you might drive over a rock as we are doing at this moment or you might drive over a stump a big stump fallen tree and just hold on hold on panda is getting a nice bush massage so i'm just gonna obviously go very slowly as it is quite a sensitive sighting still and we are still working with them um, with these little guys to habituate them and not to scare them off for them to be comfortable around us I'm just waiting a little bit to see what happens as I just said uh, we can't we don't want to chase these guys off we want to just have a nice nice sighting of them a nice visual of them alrighty so there is a big tambuti in front of us there is a small uh, lead wood so between those two there is a cup might be there between those two okay so we're gonna try our luck small naphthorn small leadwood small or actually quite a biggish tambuati tree and this is where the the cub the leopard cub is uh, busy playing with a tortoise it just caught a tortoise and that should be something quite remarkable to see as you don't get to see that at all or merely not at all actually so just hold on Panda is working his magic with his camera I'm just working my magic doing a bit of off-roading here a little bit of ethical off-roading always important Let's see if we can see this little guy. They are extremely elusive little animals, especially when they are little. I can actually see him now. <laughs> Marie, Marie, you are 100% correct. Um, okay, so it is quite a spot to play hide and seek. There, this the one leopard cub is. Just have a little bit of visual of him now.
So yes, Marie, it is quite the spot for uh, hide and seek. It's very difficult. <laughs> the cub is almost the color of that grass growing there. So yeah, it does make it a bit, a bit more challenging to view these gorgeous, gorgeous animals. But yes, I also I'd also love to see how this cub is playing with that uh, tortoise over there at the moment. And a panda can't see the little cubby anymore. I'm going to go a little bit forward. Maybe we are lucky to view this, this little one. They're not that little anymore actually. They've grown so so quick. Which they do. But yeah a bit challenging to see this little guy at this moment and I think their bellies are quite full as they did have a kill for sure yeah so somewhere between the Nopthorn, Tamburti and the le lead root this uh, little leopard is the earlier when we when we got to get a quick visual on uh, Pixie Pan, they were busy feeding actually. You could still hear them crunching some bones and tearing some skin. Um, and now Pixie Pan is flat cat. She has got a full belly. And I think the cubs as well. The cubs are more playful and they have a little bit more energy. And they're also exploring during this time, growing up. And only after 18 months they go solitary. So that's not a lot of time to absorb and to learn as much as possible how to hunt and kill and to be a completely solitary cat. Alrighty, but there is another naturalist at the moment with this little leopard cub. Oh, it's coming out of the bush now, actually. It's at that Senegalia over there. It's the Senegalia negrescens, little nopthorn. Panda, can you see the movement there? It is actually watching us at this very moment. Yes, I agree. Show yourself, little one. Nothing to be shy of. Or to be scared of. I think he is still quite astonished by this leopard tortoise. This leopard. So I'm gonna take a nice slow and a very ethical drive towards this little guy. It's literally watching us at this moment but to see this leopard through the grass is quite challenging. It's coming out now. There we go panda. And it's panting. Wow, this guy's grown so much. Hello, buddy. There we go. There we go, Panda. Oh. And it's actually snarling at us. Very cheeky. There we go. Beautiful. Nice one, Panda. As we said, <laughs> show yourself, little one. He literally just came out. How awesome and he's literally looking straight at us. What a special, special little sighting. This is very nice. And to see how these guys has actually grown and habituated in these few months is very awesome to see. And how much more relaxed they became. <coughs> And we are doing the leopard crawl. There we go. And just like that you lose them. I can still see them. But it's very difficult to keep an eye on these guys. Because they are so elusive. And they can absolutely camouflage themselves within the, 
within their natural environment. It's incredible. <laughs> Literally playing hide and seek with us. Can you see him snarling and growling? Showing these these canines. And also panting quite a bit. It's been a really hot day. And they have fed. So they've got full bellies digesting their food. And also trying to cool their bodies whilst panting. I don't know if you guys can remember the Shitali Pranayama I taught you a couple of weeks ago with those lionesses. But this is exactly what these animals are doing. The Shitali Pranayama. How cool is this guy? <laughs> hey Panda. Very cool, eh? So we're literally going to sneak here behind us. You will see, check, he's going to come right behind us. Uh, behind that Paltiforum Africanum. The toilet paper bush or the African weeping wattle. He's going to come out now. That is very special. And this is exactly what patience does. It does pay off 100%. Pandas filming a leopard on Pride Lens. This is very, very good. <laughs> Where are you going, little guy? All right. Yeah, this is truly amazing, truly spectacular, and we are so fortunate. So he's behind us and he's going off to the east. I'll try to see if I can keep... Oh, he's still there, actually, right behind us. <laughs> with the tortoise. He's with the tortoise, Panda says, because Panda can actually see him very, very well. I'm going to try to see... Huh? Okay, awesome. Panda's actually going to take his camera off because we do have our seat behind and in the way. <laughs> Panda is working his magic. Look at this is fantastic. This is such a such a brilliant sighting. He's actually there with a tortoise at the moment. <sighs> Teresa, good evening. Thank you for tuning in and what a great question. Does this cub have a name? And we have not named them yet. And I would absolutely love to, to, to name them. But we are still awaiting. We are still waiting for that moment where we are going to name them. Give them some names. But we still spending quite a bit of time with them to see what their attitude and their behavior and their own unique little, or shall I say, marvelous presence tell us and then I think we, we'd be able to give them proper and suitable names. I think I actually want to just give them some time and then slowly move my vehicle and then see if we can have another nice visual on this guy. But yeah, we were very spoiled <laughs> this afternoon and evening so far. Very, very lucky. This is fantastic. Oh, he just stood up again, but it's fine. We're gonna, I'll just slowly make my way to there. Thank you so much, Panda, for your, for your work there, brother. So special. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try my best to not chase this little guy off, but to slowly and beautifully approach him. Okay, that's a good sign when you start your vehicle and they're not running off or really reacting to 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 that then it's all good all right so let's head over to tessa to see what she's up to on her bumble and we're gonna spend some time with our little handsome man over here 
I think it is the, the young male. <laughs> he's just gone down. <clears throat> and I think he's actually still playing with the tortoise. <laughs> Good luck, Berenice. I hope you find the leopards. But I'm very happy that a cub made an appearance. That's really, really cool. I haven't seen a leopard cub in a while. I can't remember when last I saw one Sumi. It was a while ago. But I am indeed on a giraffe search. It's the last thing that I need on my little, little yeah, row. I need a giraffe, everybody. So we've checked up Voyatella Access, past Baobab Dam. We're now going south on Impala Road. We're going to come back out Zoe's down to Philemon's cut line. And then we're going to take it slow towards the eastern section and hope that we find some giraffes. There's normally that young male and the pregnant female that hang out together. Occasionally a pregnant female and a big male. So I'm hoping that we find them somewhere. But to be perfectly honest, other than, you know, the little bits and pieces that we have had today, there hasn't been an overwhelming amount of mammals out and about. Birds, yes. Mammals, not as much. For me, anyway. I know Ben's been super lucky with the wild dogs, and we got very lucky with the elephant and the rhinos and the hippo and the impalas and the steenbuck. But there's been big gaps of us driving where we haven't seen as many mammals. And I think it's all to do with the weather. We're expecting rain in the next come on, kind of <laughs> coming and kind of combined, not a great combination, uh, in the next kind of four to five days. <laughs> so I think the animals are preempting that and they're starting to move. The predators will start taking advantage of that. The wild dogs will be more active, which they are. I'm hoping we might bump into Tralumba at some point because I know she was around with some tracks and I cannot believe that Tristan got such a spectacular view of Bonwati this morning. Well done. Well done. But I feel like we're back to the kudus of not last week, the week before where I was searching and searching frantically for kudus and I just couldn't find them anywhere. <sighs> But it's okay, hopefully giraffes are a little bit easier to spot with their ears up. I'm not even seeing a track though. I've seen zebra tracks, that would be cool. I'm a little disappointed I don't have zebra on my board. I like zebras. Oh no. Igor and Tristan had giraffes last night around Sandy Patch area, so we went and had a look around there. I think they moved. Okay, wish me luck on my gigantic tall animal search. I'll send you to Ben, he's on Chitra. Anyway, it sounds like Bingo is going to end soon if it carries on this way. Well, we've made our way to a very blustery Chitwa Dam. The wind is pumping here. But we've got a lovely scene in the background there that Yuan's showing you with a nice little herd of elephants enjoying that open clearing beyond Chitwa Dam and sort of meandering in between those beautiful marula trees. Nice to see them out in the open like that, even if we are far away, but that's why we have a zoom lens. Um, I do need, I have elephant more than once on my board, so I will quite happily take your guys' uh, confirmation that those are indeed elephants, if you wouldn't mind, please. And then I'm also going to quickly show you some water buck, because we need those as well, and I'm playing catch up somewhat. You see them on the other, right on the other side, John. It's going to be long distance view again, but we might as well do what we can. There's a little group of waterbuck, well, in fact quite a big group of waterbuck over there, it's an unusually large group of waterbuck, about 10 individuals there, you see the male at the front with his horns and then a whole bunch of females with some juveniles there by the look of it. Uh, the other reason of course that I came here was because there was 
allegedly a leopard seen in this area this morning, but nobody knew sort of where it went. Uh, and I think it was last seen in the drainage line close to Chitwa Dam, so I thought it was worth coming down. And we think it was, might have been Marips, uh, which would be nice. I know he's not been seen on uh, Juma, at least, for a long time, so that would be nice if we could find him. I believe I have elephant and water buck confirmation. Thank you very much, viewers. They don't really help me in my quest this afternoon, but uh, we will go for it regardless. Strangely, I still need an impala, if you can believe that. And we've driven past impalas and we keep forgetting to frame them. Uh, what have we got? Elephant and water buck. Uh, also, don't forget, if uh, you do miss any of our live safaris or our escape to nature, we now have a... Uh, sort of a highlights and a best bits on our app that you can go on and look at and that's sort of a little synopsis of what happened during the morning or the afternoon or escape to nature so don't forget you will never have to miss anything else now with that little addition right you on which elephant are we going to go to i don't like the look of this one which has got bush baby and snake in it so i think we're going to have to do this one down here maybe we should just do a quick board update and show people where we are. Okay, so we're beginning to catch up a little bit. We've got a couple of twos. Uh, this bottom line, though, is not going to be easy. A genet, I don't fancy, and a, and a snake, although I have seen a couple of snakes lately, but that might be difficult. So I'm really hoping for this one still. Rhino is going to be the tough one. I know Tess saw some rhino earlier, but I refuse to go and look for the same rhino that she had. I consider that cheating. In Parlo, we should be able to get any point. And then scrub pairs are going to be coming out soon. So you never know, maybe we will have a late run and be able to complete this line, but I'm not holding out a great deal of hope. That being said, we've spent time with dogs and after this morning's chaos, uh, it was a lovely sighting actually of them. But we, oh, look at the little baby hippo out the water over there. You want, before he flops back in, we got him there. Uh, to the left, I think, of that one, just in front of the, no, come in front of the island here. You're on the wrong. Uh, come right a little bit. Yes, yeah, on the left there. Sorry if that's where you were. Apologies, I got all excited. Look at that little hippo. <laughs> Mum, come back. Sweet. Difficult to age that hippo. They're tiny when they come out. They don't forget a baby hippo anyway is about 35 kilograms. If you think a baby white rhino, which weighs the same as an adult, can weigh up to sort of you know somewhere between 80 to 120 kilograms shows you how much smaller baby hippos are there i suppose how big would you say they were let's say about 50 centimeters big they have a quite a short gestation period again if you take that white rhino it has a gestation period of 18 months and for something that will grow to be the same size the hippo's gestation period is only about eight months so less than half but when you give birth in the water and you spend a lot of your time in the water, like this little one is doing, uh, you don't need <laughs> you don't need the skeletal structure and the muscular structure that a terrestrial animal will need, unless you want to do that and try and climb on mum's back. Uh, and you've also got less predators to worry about in the water, just really crocodiles. So it's unnecessary to have to run for your life quite so early on. Don't forget today is also International Cheetah Day. Uh, not something that we see very often here on Juma. I think Tess did see a cheetah here probably six months or so ago. And I think I had tracks for one about a month or two back as well that was possibly came through, but not really the right habitat. Although this nice open area around Chitwa Dam would be perfectly suitable for a cheetah, but we do have a very healthy population of lion, leopard and hyena. So it's not really ideal for cheetahs here. But down in Amakala, that would be a good place to celebrate World Cheetah Day. Yeah, you've got some nice interactions with hippos here. Whether this is, this looks more like a female, I think, uh, than the bull. You just 
can see the head doesn't look very wide and you can see quite a lot of pink around the eyes. Those would be things that I would look for to try and... I think that's possibly the male who's just stood up a little bit to the right. But this young, this female seems to be having a bit of a dispute with... I'm not sure if it's with the other adults um, or with that little calf there. Oh, hello. A bit of a scrap. sure what was going on there but that is one of the reasons that you often see hippos with scars all over them those teeth particularly the bottom um, incisors there are razor sharp when the top and the bottom incisors close uh, they sort of self sharpen each other sure winds blowing um, and when they sort of whiplash their head across like that they can slash and they can create some really really nasty deep slashing wounds across the back uh, but thanks to that secretion that the skin makes, that uh, hipposuduric acid, uh, which is very rich in antibacterial properties, it's, you will almost never see a hippo with a, a festering wound. The oxpeckers will also help to keep it clean, eating any parasites and things that try and take up residence in those nooks and crannies from, uh, from disputes. But yeah, hippos are funny things. They're social animals, but they really don't like company. Um, they're constantly fighting with one another. There was one who stood up just behind those two that were having a bit of altercation. I think that was two females. I think the male is slightly further back. There's one there with his back is covered in cuts and scratches, and it's normally the males that do fight more than the females. But it's a good time to come and view hippos late afternoon as they're beginning to sort of wake up and get ready for their evening of foraging. Yeah, lovely scene, so many different species in one place, beautiful. Good afternoon, everyone. Better late than never, huh? We have finally joined the party at Majikwe Game Reserve. We are having the most bizarre afternoon, sunshine, rain, thunder, and lightning. I don't know, Davi said something about a monkey sweating. I don't even know what that means, but that's what we're having. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren. Davi's behind the camera. And I don't think anyone's won bingo yet. I've got a massive disadvantage coming out late, but I'm hoping that you guys can clarify for me zebra, impala, and giraffe. Once Davi shows you the storm, you can hear the thunder. It's crazy. We were basking in sunshine and we were a little bit late out after load, shine, um, load shedding, not load shining, because it was raining so heavy. And I told FC, it's raining. But then I realized when they saw us, we were in sunshine. So it's very confusing. Hopefully you'll get to see some lightning. But here we have giraffe, zebra, and Davi just a little bit over to the right. We have impala. So I'm trying, everyone, I'm trying to play catch-up. If any reserve can play catch-up, it's Madikwe. I feel like even the giraffes are a little bit confused by the weather, which is completely understandable. Oh my goodness, we have confirmation. Okay. I am putting them on and then I'm going to show you my board. And remember, we're just at the very... Yeah, I'm going to go for that one. I've changed my mind. Sorry, sorry. Okay, there we go. So I have giraffe. I'm aiming to get the top line, but I've obviously got impala and zebra on the bottom line. Hippo we really don't see in Madikwe, <laughs> but never mind, maybe we can invent a hippo or maybe Davi can actually pretend to be one. So I'm hoping to find an elephant, which shouldn't be too hard, an Egyptian goose, grasshopper and a warthog. Doesn't sound too difficult, does it? But I do believe I am running against time with Tessa. I think she's already doing very well. 
but I'll give it my best shot. I mean, we don't just have one giraffe. I think giraffe is what Tessa's looking for. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight giraffe. I mean, we should get eight points. We saw lightning. Oh, did you see lightning? Are you happy about that, Darby? Cameramen get really excited when lightning comes into their shots. So I hope you all saw that, screenshotted it, and appreciated it. As long as the skies don't open, we'll be okay. I'm just scanning around to make sure there's nothing I'm missing. This is a good area for war talk. Okay, on we go to attempt to play bingo, but I believe Ben has also found a giraffe. All right. Oh, welcome, Lauren. Uh, briefly, and good luck that side. You haven't got long, but I have every confidence in you. Uh, well, we've managed to find a giraffe, ticking things off all over the show now. A nice giraffe bull here, which I do need for my board again. It doesn't really help with the, the line that I'm going for, um, but I will take the giraffe nonetheless. A lovely old bull here, standing, well, I would say in the shade, but the sun is setting quite rapidly behind us now, but... Uh, was feeding on this marula, I think, or possibly the little bush willow in front of him. I'm not quite sure, but he's been distracted by something uh, off into the drainage line to my left. You can see he's looking over there intently, and I'm just double-checking very carefully in case it is marips, but we haven't seen or heard anything to suggest otherwise, but you can see he's very interested in something that side. But that is where the wind is blowing from, so maybe he's also picked up on a scent. So we're going to check very carefully in this area. And strangely, I still need to get an impala, but we're heading on to that big open area behind Chitwa. Uh, and there's normally, hun normally, he says, there's normally hundreds of impalas there. Okay, it's Mr. Giraffe. You're going to hide behind the bush. That's... Looks like quite an old giraffe, uh, looking at the ossicones and those protrusions, uh, particularly behind the those ossicones. You can see those bumps on the nape of his neck there. Good sign of age. And... Uh, the skin's kind of hanging a little bit off his face. Not an old, old giraffe. See, there's a little bit of uh, damage from mites on his neck there. He's lost some of the hair. Thank you for my giraffe confirmation, Morgan, and viewers. Much appreciated. That puts me at a total of five stickers now, but still only... I've got three twos. So does that mean I've got six and therefore win? I don't think it works like that, unfortunately. You can see that giraffe feeding on a buffalo thorn, which we saw the other day as well. One of their favourite foods, and actually a very tasty leaf. Uh, we can eat buffalo thorn leaves as well, actually. That's one of the reasons that the buffalo thorn is so heavily armoured and has those nasty hooked and straight thorns on it, uh, because the leaves are very, very tasty. Um, I would honestly rather eat buffalo thorn leaves than lettuce. I'm not a big fan of lettuce. I find lettuce a bit pointless. It's just green water that's been flattened into a sheet and sticks to the top of your mouth. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a fan of salad as a rule. Uh, but for those of you who love lettuce, I apologise. But rather have buffalo thorn leaves. I once did a, an assessment, a, a Fugaza assessment, and one of the students had actually gone to the time... Uh, to collect a bunch of buffalo thorn leaves and then kind of deep fried them and we had them with sort of potatoes, garlic and uh, deep fried buffalo thorn leaves and I tell you what, it made one hell of a tasty snack, I'm not going to lie. I actually think it tastes a little bit like apple peel. If you imagine peeling an apple and eating the peel, it doesn't have that really horrible tanniny taste uh, that a lot of leaves have and for that reason it's very attractive to the animals and that's why the tree has uh, developed this rather nasty and and really <laughs> uncomfortable mechanical defense anyone who's ever got stuck in a buffalo thorn will know exactly what i mean and there's a reason in afrikaans it's known as a blink blah wachabiki tree which is a shiny leafed wait a minute tree because you get stuck in one of those and you'll know about it they've been responsible for quite a few ear piercings over the years driving past them taking people's hats off I didn't quite catch the name there, Morgan. Was it Millipede? Uh, 
It was a millipede. Sorry for the delay there. Um, so that millipede, uh, yes, giraffes have been struck by lightning. Um, and yes, they probably do get struck by lightning more often than other things for obvious reasons. If they're in a big open area and they are the tallest thing around and there is a thunderstorm, uh, then yes, it has happened. Uh, it, look, it doesn't happen all the time. Uh, I'm aware of one or two places uh, where I used to work, for example, we had some giraffe bones uh, that were quite close to one of the roads and the story I heard was that was from a giraffe that had been struck by lightning. So it does happen sometimes. Um, but so it's not the sort of thing you would expect to happen every every summer. You're not going to have a massive dip in your giraffe population because of lightning strikes. But it is certainly a danger. That's a lovely scene. There's a beautiful sunset behind us, a giraffe feeding in the trees. And so that little section there at Chitpur Dam was stunning with the elephants in the background and big herds of water bucks and uh, all the hippos having some fun and games. But I need to go and find an impala. I can't have a bingo board with impala on it and not tick off impala. So I think uh, as beautiful as this is, I think we should carry on towards that open area you want. And let's sit, quickly see if we can frame an impala. And then that just leaves us with the delusive rhino and a scrub hair. I'm very confident on a scrub hair. It's the rhino that's going to be the problem. Okay, so I fully expect to see an impala in the next 30 seconds or so. But you never know. I've been on this open area before and seen not a sausage, as they say, where I've also been out there and seen probably a couple of hundred impalas milling around together. So let's hope today is a good day. If I can remember the route, I haven't done this road for a while. I do get a bit disorientated on Chitwa sometimes, so who knows where we might end up. You want to be got your sleeping bag? <laughs> yeah, there are worse places to sleep, sleep in the car. Ah, is that an impala? Did I see an impala way off on the left? Yes, I see multiple impalas. Here we go. Bring on another sticker. Oh, you've got some even closer in front. It's a good impala day. I wonder if we might find my rips sniffing around here as well with all this food. You never know. Right, let me find a spot here and you guys can corroborate my impala. Gives us three in a row. We're catching up, Yon, we're catching up. Hello, ladies. Giving us a good look. Oh, that one's just having a bit of a groom. In fact, they're both having a bit of a groom. Thank you for my confirmation. That's three in a row. Scrub hair and rhino to go to uh, pull out a highly unlikely victory. Okay, well, we're having a little bit of a, a spate of ticking off bingo boxes. Let's see if Lauren can also join the fray up in Medikwe. Well, thank goodness my elephant did not disappear. That's for sure. Because I need you, youngster. We're all nice and wet. Elephant is on my board, so I will wait for your confirmation and hopefully I can start to get somewhere. My trusty old Egyptian goose was not at the pad it's normally at, so hmm. Mm hmm. I'm gonna need to go searching for Egyptian goose. Oh, come on, little one. It's not a nice view of you. I'll try and move that stubby. Oh, 
he's disappearing now. Can we work with this? He's going to keep moving away, but once I get your confirmation, I'll put the sticker on my board and get racing, racing against time to find other animals. Excellent confirmation. Okay, I have two of each, elephant, giraffe, impala, and zebra. There we go, two, two, not bad for coming out late. Grasshopper, Ooh, that's gonna be a tricky one. I think I'm actually gonna to have to get out on foot. Hold on. Oh no, it's a beetle, but that would have been such a good spot. Oh no, Darby, it's a grasshopper, I think. Okay, here up atop, blowing in the wind, of course. On that? Yep, um, go down a little bit. Mm, what was that? Oh dear, now I can't find it. Okay, I'm on the hunt for grasshoppers now, but I believe Pridelands have found their leopard again. Fantastic ladies and gents. We are currently situated here in the middle of Pridelands, part of the Great Kruger. And uh, we came back to the, the kill of Pixie Pan and her two cubs and all three is here currently. We have visual of two. It's Pixie Pan and actually Peter Pan. They do have names just to update you on that. So the male youngster's name is Peter Pan with Pixie Pan as the leopardess, the mother, and then the young cubs. Um, the young female is called Tinkerbell. So there we go. There we have our trio. All from Disney. How very sweet is that? Pixie Pan. The young male cub's name is Peter Pan. And the young female cub's name is Tinkerbell. And as you were asking that, someone just updated me. So I've been uh, traveling a bit and I've been away for uh, a while and um, I was never informed that they actually did receive names. So it's quite special to know that this will be their names from now on forward. Very, very cool characters, I must say. What a beautiful sight that is with Pixie Pan and Peter Pan on the rocks. And then we can hear Tinker Bell underneath this small marula feeding on the kill actually and it just shows you once again the bush teaches you so much patience i mean we were spending time with peter pan and then we loved and left him we came all the way around to the kill which i can still hear her feeding little tinker bell came around sat here for at least 10 15 minutes and then they all came together again which is quite special wow she's going for that kill I wish I could show you how she is feeding I can't even see how Tinkerbell is feeding at the moment uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's just quite, quite interesting to, to still sit here and hear them feeding. <laughs> well, if I just look back, seeing these cubs a few weeks ago, they, oh, it's actually been a few months ago now. <laughs> they were still so shy and so skittish. And uh, now they are quite relaxed with us being around. They are trusting us more. 
And it just shows you that the work also pays off. It's never a good thing to push any animal and to treat them unethically. It's never a good idea. And uh, for you to be able to spend time with them and to treat them with utmost respect and to always uh, approach them in a really nice and gentle way, this is what pays off. Very, very special. And also Pixie Pan, she's a great mother. She's a very, very successful leopardess, raising her two cubs up until the size, this age. I mean, they must be 10 months old now already, if you think about it, close to 10 months. And after eight months, they're going to be all on their own from a year and a half old. They're going to start leaving mom or mom is going to actually start leaving them and then they're going to be solitary. How's it, Caleb? I totally agree. Caleb is saying the cub is so cute. It's still so weird for me to call them cubs, but they are still cubs. They are still quite young, uh, but they are almost as big as mom at this moment. So yeah, it's, it's incredible. They are very cute. I agree. Alrighty, but uh, I think we're going to most probably just spend another five more minutes to see what they get up to. And then we're going to love and leave them. We can still hear Tinker Bell crushing and uh, carrying on um, with those bones of their kill. But for now, let's head over to Tess back in Juma to see what is cracking on her side. Excellent timing, Berenice. Uh, I have not found a giraffe, but I have found a hyena coming down to Treehouse Dam with a beautiful sunset. The hyena has literally just appeared out of nowhere. We had not seen it before. It came running out the bush, so I don't know which hyena it is. Oh, that's quite far away as well. Very interesting markings on its side. Also looking very dirty, so tough to say who it might be. But if you have an ID for me, please let me know. Hello, hyena. Are you going to walk behind the car and completely avoid the dam? That's kind of you. Wow. <laughs> oh, actually, I do recognize that marking on its side. Where are you going? This is definitely one of the Juma clan members I've seen this hyena. I should know who this is. I should know. I should know. Give me a second, I'll think of it. But anyway, yes, some beautiful timing as the hyena disappears. And where it's going, I don't know if we'll be able to follow it. It's going straight into the thickets of the drainage line. And we won't off-road for the hyena, so we're just going to wait and see where it goes. It's gone... Okay, no, it's definitely gone. It's gone at speed into the drainage line. Okay, we're not going to be able to follow that hyena, unfortunately, but at least you got a glimpse. We can keep looking at the sunset in the meantime and hope that other clan members are coming to join because that would be spectacular. Ah, Shreyas, thank you. It is Kikau. <laughs> 
thank you so so much i do appreciate it i do have hyena on my board however it does not benefit me that much i will put a sticker on anyway but igor doesn't have to show that because it's in a standalone row and column and diagonal so that doesn't help me much but i'm happy to put another sticker on the board so kikau is a really good hyena to see i like it um, because I was distracted by Kikau and a sticker, I don't know who I'm sending you to, but I know I'm sending you somewhere, so I shall send you there while I watch the sunset. Oh, Ben, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming to us. That was an excruciating wait. Uh, scrub hair. Please, if we can have this confirmed, that is indeed a scrub hair. If you're not sure, I'll be poised with my sticker for the last two minutes because that now gives me four in a row. Jan and I are catching up. We now just need a rhino uh, to snatch an unlikely victory. But there we go. One scrub here. We're just in the road but it is the sun has pretty much set now. We're beginning to lose light so it's about the right time for these scrub hairs to come out. This one's sitting fairly motionless. We were talking, I think it was Tom who asked about the ears of those wild dogs. If you want to see some big ears, uh, there's a good example for you. There's hair ears are massive bigger than a standard rabbit ears of course that's one of the things that differentiates rabbits from hares that along with their uh, the type of young they have hares have precocial young so they're far more active more quickly and need far less parental care whereas rabbits have altricial young so that sort of means that they are born with their eyes closed and they take a lot longer before they are self-mobile if that is uh, the correct phrase and then because of that is where they spend their uh, sleeping time. So rabbits, of course, live underground in warrens and uh, hares just live in sort of in the grass, basically. They'll just find shelter during the day. And they can be quite terrifying if you're walking. I remember tracking lions many years ago. I'd only just started. In fact, it was on my work placement. And it was the first time I was following lion tracks on my own with a rifle and everything else. So I'm tiptoeing around, genuinely rather nervous. So I hadn't had an encounter on foot with lions on my own yet and I trod on a tuft of grass and one of these things came flying out from underneath it and I'm, I, I have to admit that I did chamber around in my panic, realised it was only a scrub hare and, and swiftly relaxed again but uh, the adrenaline was well and truly pumping at that point. Thank you for my scrub hare confirmation. So yes, you want, let's just prove that we just need this rhino to for a come from behind victory. And then we must go try and find one. So here we go. We've got Egyptian goose, scrub hare, impala, elephant. And we're just missing this rhinosaurus over here. If we can find him, we are winning, quite literally. Okay, as lovely as the scrub hare is, I need to find a rhino. So let's carry on. I think there's a couple of us on four in a row. I think I heard Tess was on four in a row and possibly Berenice as well. So this one looks like it might go down to the wire. Of course, which is exactly what happened last week when Tess and I managed to end triumphant. The only thing that may not work in my favour is that I'm somewhere on Chitwa and I don't really know where I am. I'm just using where the sun is to assume that that is east, where the sun... Sorry, west. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. Uh, west where the sun is setting. So I'm hopefully going north, which should take me back to Gary, Maine at some point. Well, the good news is we did see some rhino tracks earlier. Uh, but not knowing the road network very well here, I have no real concept where they may have gone to. But at least there was proof that at some point in the last 24 hours, I don't think they were very fresh, but there has been a rhino somewhere in this area, wherever I am, whatever it's called. And I did say we were going to leave today up to the bush gods, and so far so good. That's what you get for going for wild dogs when they're not on your board. I fully expect to find a crash of rhinos in the road. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Join me, James Hendry, on an odyssey through the most adorable, fascinating, 
heart-stopping moments that we have experienced here on Wild Earth. Ask and you shall receive. This is actually a really nice sighting. We came here to look for a Egyptian goose and lo and behold we're actually having a really lovely sighting of many Egyptian geese. They've all been doing the sipping and the tipping. Sip, sip, tip, tip. Been very quiet and very obliging which is lovely but this is needed on my board so I shall wait for confirmation from you all. Wartalk should be easy. Why is Wartalk being difficult today? I think it's because of the weather. But I'll still try. I'm going to turn back on ourselves and go to the airstrip. The airstrip, you normally find tons of warthogs. I think these were the Egyptian geese that we saw last time and they were very young. I think they've all grown up and it's a big family. A big goose unit. Unit. Grasshopper might be a no-go in this weather. We're losing light as well. Excellent! I now have three. Elephant. Egyptian goose, or Egyptian geeses, and giraffe. Doing, doing, doing. Warthog we're going to go for, grasshopper. Oh, it's going to be tricky. But we have got a little lamb on the wall. Look at that, Dobby. Oh. We saw our first Wheels calf yesterday. I wish we'd went live with it. The first one. And I wanted to ask the Juma teams, had the Wheels started dropping calves in Juma yet? It was our first one. I haven't seen any other ones. And it was so young and wobbly. So I'm sure my director can ask the Juma teams. I know it's normally December, but I just wonder this year maybe if they have dropped already. That lightning is coming really fierce over there. I 
do just want to try and show you the sky. It's pink pink, like Barbie girl pink. Apparently the Barbie the movie is coming out. What could that possibly be about? But anyway, look at that. It doesn't actually look as pink on the screen, but I promise it's pink. Looks like a volcano erupting. Davi and I actually slept up the top of a volcano in Ethiopia. Yes, we did. We decided that that would be a really good idea and it was an active volcano and we were really not too far away from the lava and the smell was unbelievable. We didn't have a blanket or a pillow, just a thin little mattress at the top of a volcano. If any of you want to do it, let me know. It was delightful. Warthog, where are you? Do you know what? I'm just going to drive forward a little bit, Dobby, and see if there are any around the water body. You never know. I've got to try. Anything could be around this water body, actually. It was so stinking hot today. I can't believe how the weather has just flipped like that. Hello, Egyptian geese. Thank you for being here. War talk. Mm. Dobby, you've got keen eyes. Can you find me a war talk, please? <laughs> Look at that sky. Oh, wow. We might actually spend a little bit longer looking at this, but we are going to send you guys over to Ben. Well, thanks, Lauren. Good luck that side. Well, good news is that John and I say found Chitwa airstrip, so we have a vague idea of where we are now. So we have now blundered back off into the bushes in a direction we don't know very well because this is more fun than driving roads that we know. There's still another 15 minutes of light. I'm confident we'll find our way out and I am very confident that I can navigate with the stars and it is relatively clear at the moment as well. So still very much on the hunt for that rhinoceros. Plenty of elephant evidence on this road. You can see a sort of a, trag, a drag mark of a trunk a little bit further back as well. And yes, we'd very much like to run into, well not literally of course, but to find Kuchava and or and Sumi. I've only ever seen both of those once. I'd like to see them again. Uh, thank you, Denise. Yes, we are. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm confident of finding a rhino, to be honest, but I, say I don't know this area very well uh, that I'm in, and so therefore I'm giving myself a better chance than otherwise. But they've got four legs. They are tetrapods. They can travel, so anything is possible. Uh, but there's nothing quite like a bit of healthy competition. I'd pretty much given up even being a part of Bingo after we had... Uh, the dogs and things this morning, oh, this morning, sorry, this afternoon. I thought, no, we'll get distracted with the dogs for a while. But instead, I left it up to, to nature to do its thing. And, uh, yeah, so far, so good. Eh? Even if we only get to four, I will be quite happy with that achievement. Okay, I think I recognise where we are again. I'm beginning to understand Chitwa. Still holding out hope. It's actually beautiful light. It's not really translating very well because obviously we've got to balance the light. So unfortunately for you, you can see me. Oh, there we go. You're on. Yeah. In fact, let's see if we can find you a nice silhouette. Look at those lovely bands, those rays of light coming through the clouds. There. It's a nice sort of worth just appreciating a sunset. 
It's a lot more orange than it's coming across on the camera, but it's a, it's a lovely sunset. Africans, oh, there we go, look at that. By the magic of television, we've got a uh, far more accurate, uh, far more accurate coloration there. Lovely crimson skies in the west. Also gives me a chance to listen out maybe for some oxpeckers, which might give the presence of a rhino away, or possibly even a vocalization, the way that sort of heavy breathing they do, that <laughs> if you're really lucky. Uh, probably whilst we're having a quiet moment here, just a good time to remind you that on the 10th and the 11th of this month, so next weekend, we will be having our Quizmania weekend. So we invite you guys to form your teams, register on the website before the 6th of December, and we will be giving you a whole bunch of interactive quizzes throughout the weekend, and you can keep tally and keep your score. Um, and obviously it's all in aid of increasing everybody's understanding of these animals, which is so important, because without that we can't conserve them, and with it being Animal Rights Day soon as well, uh, just understanding the animals better allows us to, say, better protect and uh, and help them along and respect them at all times. He seems to be in a very quiet area here. I can hear water thickness in the distance, some tall spur fowl, but everything's far away. There's not much happening where we are. It's very silent by the wind rustling through the leaves against this lovely backdrop. Well, it seems like we're not the only one enjoying a sunset, or at least the sky. Let's send you back up to Medikwe and to Lauren. Darby and I have not moved an inch. We cannot take our eyes off the sky. We're transfixed. It makes you feel so small when you sit and look at an atmospheric scene like this. The lightning is just snap, crackling and popping. The wind is starting to really howl. I think we're gonna be in for a storm tonight. There's nothing quite like being in your bed, your big cosy bed with your memory foam pillow and your thick blanket listening to the storm. That is one of the best feelings in the world. But when you get caught in it outside, it's definitely not the best feeling in the world. I often think what the animals feel, what the animals think, but to be honest, they'll be very familiar with storms. It's not to say they'll like them or enjoy them, but it's not a case of this is not happening for the first time. They'll have been experiencing them from since they were cubs or lambs or calves. Maybe they are scared. I know dogs, especially my old dog, she was terrified. We actually had to look at getting tablets for her to calm her down during fireworks and storms. And there are tablets where you can sort of mildly, mildly sedate your dog. Now, I don't mean drug them, but just calm them down a little bit because it can bring on heart attacks. But of course, for wild animals, it's different. They have no choice but to survive. No one's going to give them a tablet. I am trying. 
trying to hide my mic from the wind, but it's picking up a tenfold. It's feeling really dramatic. But as I do hide my mic, we're just going to sit here and enjoy these incredible scenes in front of us. Wow, this has just blown me away. But I don't think anyone's won bingo yet. I have a grasshopper to find. Ah, how does one find a grasshopper in low ambient light? This could be a little bit challenging, but I do love a challenge. Darby, shall we start looking for Warthog? <laughs> Don't sound too excited, Dobby. <laughs> okay, war talk, here we come. Wow, this is going to be some storm. Once it reaches this time of night, me personally, my eyes just, I really struggle to see. I have had laser eye surgery when I was younger. I used to be minus 5.5, .5, which is pretty bad, but I just struggle in this light. And I think most humans do. We're not really crepuscular animals. We really are strictly diurnal or we're equipped to be. I know some of us are night owls. I am definitely not. And this light is a big struggle. It's not dark. It's not dark enough for you to put your spotlight on or even your headlights. But it's low light. And this is when I start to see things. So this should be really fun. Especially when looking for grasshoppers. Hmm. Okay, warthogs here we come. And we're going to send you guys over to bed. Okay, well we are still on our hunt for a rhino in order to say win that an unlikely victory, but it's not about winning, it's the taking part that counts, of course. Although, no, I lie, I want to win. I'm saying to you, and I'm just really kind of determined, ooh, what's that? Is that, is that an impala or is that something else, Jan? Can you see? 
Oh no, it's an Impala. It's okay. I just thought it looked rather cat-like for a second. Uh, it's not. It wasn't a rhino, Morgan. No, if it was a rhino, you would have known about it. That I can assure you. But yeah, I'm at a bit of a loss, really, to go and look for one of those because they they just turn up so sporadically. Um, got a few ideas which we'll put into. Yes, and I, the artist I know did see some rhinos somewhere this afternoon and I'm sure that she probably chased them deep into the block just in case because she knew that rhino was on my list as well. Uh, and I would be feel a little bit I know, I cheated, I'd feel a little bit uh, harsh to go and find the same rhinos if I, we were lucky enough to do so. But you never know, the bush is full of surprises. Who knew we were going to see dogs this morning and this afternoon? Who knew I was going to get an African golden oriole here yesterday and a thick-billed cuckoo this morning? So you never know. Oh, and a wildcat last night as well. I forgot about that. That was a real treat. But yeah, there's a couple of areas that I know might bring us some luck. Uh, so I'm going to sort of head in that vague direction and cross fingers. I'd like to know, what does Tess still need? Morgan, can you tell me? Just so I can make sure I don't give her any help. <laughs> oh, I'm bitter and mean, hey? Come on, right now. This reminds me of the very first bingo I did where in order to come second, I had to find an elephant, and I think I finally got the elephant with the spotlight and the IR light with about two minutes left of the show, and I have to say I was quite, uh, quite excited by that one. But we've had some nice sightings this afternoon, certainly. I love that time around Shitwa Dam. Really nice to see everything together. We so often show you kind of one thing at a time. Uh, and it's really nice to show you multiple things in multiple places. Uh, it just gives that more of a sense of impression that we are in a big open system and not just showing you individuals the whole time. So she show you things all together and how everything works harmoniously. It's one of the real delights of being out here. And I think once you understand that, you have a far better appreciation of the bush as well. It's not about individuals, it's about every single organism out here and uh, how they all work together to, to structure this ecosystem. I normally sort of describe it as like scaffolding. Hello, hello, how's it? Good, good. Uh, I love lions, the rarest animal to see in the Sabi Sands. Whoa. Well, um... Okay, on the assumption it's not something that shouldn't be here that randomly turns up. For example, I've seen a crested guinea fowl here, and that's normally something you only see way in the far, far, far north of Kruger. Um, but that was one that I saw here. But I think probably we're going to go back to the old faithful, the old classic. It's the, the pangolin or the aardvark. Um, you just don't see them much. They're definitely here. We get tracks for them occasionally. Uh, but they are so hard to find. And quite often I've done like middle of the night night drives, be that uh, helping out with anti-poaching sweeps or sometimes you know if you had guests for maybe four or five nights and you've seen everything or they've seen everything they wanted to see you've ticked off your big five animals and you've seen multiple leopards and leopards in trees and things um, sometimes it's nice to just mix it up a little bit skip the afternoon drive have an early dinner and go out uh, much much later of course we can't do that now because of the anti-poaching uh, problems, uh, which is, you know, it's a, it's a real shame, but a lot of places have protocols that say, you know, nobody is to drive around, for example, after 10 p.m., and then the anti-poaching units know that anybody driving around after that time should not be there. It makes their life a lot easier. But in my experience, those drives were always very, very quiet. You used to see, we used to see lots of dakers, lots of chameleons, uh, but if you didn't see a cat or a, or a hyena, uh, they were much, much quieter, and I never saw an aardvark or a pangolin whilst doing that. Would occasionally, but I remember one evening on the Balule Nature Reserve, this was a strange one, I saw a, I think it was actually my very first ever aardvark, and I remember exactly where it was on the road, 
and I remember it was 7.38, I'll never forget, because I checked my watch, because it was a big moment for me. And two nights later, I was driving down the same stretch of road, and you won't believe me, but it is true, at 7.38, and exactly the same area of road, I found the same aardvark again. So I then decided that maybe they were indeed creatures of habit, but uh, I think again I was hoping for too much because therefore the problem is then you kind of get this idea that if you drive that road at that time you'll always find that animal and I never saw an aardvark again on that road. So you never know. But yeah, to find them literally the same piece of road at literally the exact time to the minute, I couldn't believe it. I think the last pangolin I saw was actually in the Manuleti about four years, three years, no, about three years ago, I think. Actually, out on an afternoon drive, I was a guest, I was visiting friends up there, uh, and it was like three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, and one was just crossing the road in front of us. I suppose that wildcat that we had last night, I mean, that's the first wildcat that I've seen on Juma. First one for Yuan as well. Uh, again, those smaller predators, the caracals, the servals, the wild cats, we don't see much of because of our more than healthy leopard population here. Uh, there isn't much room for those smaller uh, individuals and they are killed. I've seen a leopard with a serval kill in a tree before. That was quite a disturbing sighting. It was amazing to see but you know, it really did feel for the serval because it's not something you see every day. I saw a picture on social media recently. I'm not sure where it was taken but also with a, a leopard with a serval. Uh, but so no, I'm struggling to think of anything else that would be genuinely really rare. But that's the fun part of it. I say it day in, day out, but you just never know. It's why I love to do this job. It's why I love to come and drive around in the bush um, and just see whatever you see. Some days you see lots, other days you see nothing. And other days you think you're seeing nothing and then suddenly you see lots. You just never know what's going to happen. For example, there might be a rhino around this next corner. No, there isn't. But we're going to keep trying. The other thing we were commenting on earlier, not in terms of rare animals, are just things I'm surprised we haven't seen yet, is I'm yet to see a golden orb spider, those banded legged nephilas, as they are more correctly known, those big ones that you see with that sort of yellowy silk. Uh, last year, I swear there was an epidemic. I was at uh, South African Wildlife College, which is just sort of only up the road from here as the crow flies, probably only about 50 kilometers away, and I've never known anything like it. I mean, you couldn't take more than two steps without getting tangled up in an orb spider web. They were everywhere, and I haven't seen one yet. It's still a little early in the season, perhaps. Um, this was sort of January, February, where they were out in force, and you normally start seeing them come December, but I haven't seen one. I saw a garden orb about a month ago, and I haven't seen more than one or two of those since. And I do like my spiders. We had a baboon spider in camp this morning, just a baby one, which Eagle caught and we had a good look at. But it will be, soon we'll start getting hopefully baboon spiders on the road, males looking for females and also the scorpions out as well, looking for their mates. stop there please because now we have got some leopards making love now this is not like when a baby human bites your finger let's push play on this episode of the wild show
We are still watching the lightning. Way off in the distance. And no luck with War Dog. It just got too dark too quickly. But I think three on the bingo board is not bad. Whoa, look at that flash. We are going to bumble a little bit closer to home, though, because I don't want to get caught in the storm. One day I'll win the bingo. We just need load shedding to go away. The sky is on fire. almost the end of drive can you believe it but before i forget very exciting episode two of the wild show with mr james henry not henry he gets very upset if you say henry henry will be available on the wild earth app at 9 30 p.m eastern time which is tonight for all of you american viewers and this is 7.30 p.m. Central African time, which is tomorrow evening. Monday. Yes, Monday is tomorrow for all our South African and UK viewers. So please don't miss it. James was my mentor, my boss. <laughs> he taught me almost everything about the bush. And those are the times that I miss dearly. It will... I assume be absolutely hilarious if I know James. So please do tune in, tune in once again, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight for the American viewers and 7.30 p.m. Central African time tomorrow for South African and UK viewers. I actually remember secretly hopping on a, the vehicle with James. I wasn't supposed to be there. It was Davi and James. But I was off and I thought, oh, I just, I'm going to jump on the vehicle for fun. And I was trying to stay as quiet as possible. But <laughs> James was just making me laugh so hard that I ended up laughing out loud. And you could hear me laughing on the vehicle. So he had to apologize for my laughter. But it's actually his fault, really. Sophia, amazing light show indeed. It's really quite crazy here in Madikwe. There's no way we'll find a warthog now though. But it was fun trying. I wonder what tomorrow will bring. Very often I've noticed here really thunders and the rain pours all through it at night and it clears up by morning quite quickly. And that's very much what I'm hoping for. You can hear the crickets starting already. Okay, we are just gonna bumble a little bit because it looks like it is raining ahead of us. One thing you don't want is rain on all the equipment. <laughs> we are going to go into infrared or you'll never see me. There we go, there I am. I can feel the raindrops already. Please rain, don't soak us, not tonight. Have any of you seen Austin Powers where he tries to do a three point turn in that vehicle in a very narrow space? Well, that's what I feel like right now. There we go, that only took four turns. And a stall. Don't forget the stall. There we go. I'll get my spotlight out in just a moment. 
driving home in Madikwe you see a lot. I would say you see a lot more nocturnal animals than you would do or than I used to see in Juma. When I was here with my parents, we saw civet, African wildcat, white-tailed mongoose, chameleon, although chameleons aren't nocturnal. I just need to reach for the spotlight. Okay, as I do find my spotlight, we're gonna send you guys over to Ben on his bumble. Thank you, Lauren. Well, we are still hoping beyond hope that we find a rhinoceros somewhere. No luck thus far. I did just find a track, uh, but it was literally just a track, so I don't think it was very fresh. I'm generally sort of driving in that direction. Uh, I hadn't realised how little time there is left either, so we are running out. I wonder if this will be the first animal bingo that I know of where we might end up with no outright winner. I don't know if we have a tie-breaking situation. But let's not give up yet. So I got those elephants to come second a couple of months ago or a month or two ago with two minutes left, so you never know. I, mean, I have driven past a couple of chameleons and things because I've got rhino vision now. Let's hope not, otherwise I may drive into a tree. But <laughs> Although I should say rhino vision is not as bad as a lot of people make it out to be and I've seen that firsthand myself whilst walking rhino on foot. As long as you're moving, I've been picked up by rhino from well over 100 metres away just from our movement. You may not be able to discern detail, but don't assume that a rhino can't see you. Your biggest friend if you're going to try and get close to rhino is the wind. See Tess is back out. I'm, I'm still not quite sure what Tess is still looking for, but I know she's also on four. I think it might be a giraffe, which worries me slightly. I'd rather have the giraffe than the rhino. The scrub hair was skipping around, but we've already got our scrub hair. Oh, it's nice and clear though, that makes me happy. Oh, sorry, it's very bumpy at the moment. These corrugations can get quite nasty at times. Are you still there, you one? We didn't shake you off there? No. Uh, thank you, William. I'm not sure if you hoped that I didn't get lost, uh, but I won't get lost. Don't worry, I know where I am now. Oh, uh, there's an impala. Uh, and yes, I'm still looking for this rhino. You never know. I'm not even sure which road is this. I'm not even 100% sure. Let's check it. Oh, I see where we are. Okay. Uh, no, I think this is the bottom end of Zoe's, huh? But that's fine. Then we can check this block. Come on, runners. Or a leopard, I'm not going to lie, I'll take the leopard. I will forfeit the victory in order to have a leopard. Come on. Still here watching our rhino, and of course we have those guinea fowl skipping through the frame at the moment. They do move at quite a considerable pace when they do decide to run off. And this rhino really giving its horn a proper shine. Basically a French polish for 
the Black Rhino this evening. But the wind is starting to pick up. It is making the camera bounce a little bit, so let's just zoom back out. Quite a cool scene with those giraffe and the rhino, and of course the sun setting. So let us just keep track of everything. Still got our rhino in frame. We've obviously got a beautiful sunset, and of course those giraffe with the guinea fowl scooting through. Just watching to see what happens here, but a fantastic end to a day here in Okakuya. No complaints at all. A fantastic day ahead. It looks like some rain off in the distance. How that affects us tomorrow remains to be seen. Okay, still on the rhino hunt. I think we've only got about five minutes left. We're running out of options, but you never know. But as I said before, we will quite happily take a last minute leopard as well. And it is a beautifully clear, well, mostly clear night. There's a few clouds in the west, but that makes my heart very, very happy. I'm hoping it's going to stay clear next week, but I don't think the forecast is very good um, for what I do, obviously, with my stargazing stuff. Uh, it is a bit of a challenging time of the year. It seemed, just, uh, I had a lovely week, actually. I was down uh, and I did an evening, a stargazing evening on Wednesday night, and we were blessed with clear skies again on Wednesday night for 80 children from one of the local high schools. And I have to say that was good fun, but yeah, I made the mistake of inviting any questions. Uh, at the beginning of the little presentation I was doing before I was showing people constellations and basically ended up answering questions for the next hour and a half, uh, which was very, very cool to see the younger generation have so many questions. I think particularly with kids, with what I do, they're all space stuff and star stuff is of huge interests. Uh, but it's amazing some of the questions you get. I had one little boy, I think he was about eight years of age, asking me about string theory. I had to point out to him that I'm not an astrophysicist or a quantum physicist or anything like that, I'm afraid. Uh, but there were some brilliant questions coming up, and I have to say they really enjoyed the evening and embraced it, which made me very, very happy. Thanks to our main lover, it has been a great bumble actually, say unexpected dogs and a, a far more sedate sighting than the one this morning. I swear this morning I don't know how many kilometres we drove trying to find those things but I think the reason they were all over the place is so because of the scent of that other pack that's been here uh, over the last few days. Uh, but yes, thanks for joining us on another Sunset Safari and I think we've got less than a minute left now, so I think I'm going to have to resign myself to no rhino this afternoon. Um, and having discussed it with the powers that be, it seems that since myself and Tess were both on four, uh, it has been decided that Team Juma collectively wins. Uh, so it was a victory again for Team Juma, unless I get lucky in the next 30 seconds. 
Uh, which is good. Tess and I won it together last week and I suppose then we've done it again. Maybe we are destined to be successful when we work as a team. Otherwise, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been great spending the afternoon with you again. Another awesome sunset safari. We will be live uh, again tomorrow morning from 5.30.